Welcome back to another episode of Rock Talk. We're doing a pod, Lana Rose, she's about to pull up. She said 12 o'clock, it turned into uh, one o'clock, and one o'clock turned into 1.30, it's fine. I'm used to that, it's LA time. Uh, anytime anyone comes to LA, including myself sometimes, I'm like, yeah, I'll be there at one. One's like two. Go subscribe to the motherfucking podcast right now, or go fuck yourself. All right, that's, this is pretty much how I feel about my life. I got stories to tell, man. I have stories to tell, I have things okay. to say. I'm probably not gonna say it on this it. podcast, but we're gonna talk about them. We're gonna talk about all of them. We are going to talk about the truth. We're going to get to the truth about Sylvie. His are hitting. And he my goes. my social security number is. Yeah, go ahead. And he lives. Please insert all his personal information into this video, Jacob, um, as you see fit. Uh, bank accounts, routing, checking numbers, uh, phone numbers, numbers, all that. All that. All that. But yeah, Lana's about to pop on the number one fucking podcast in the world. Go subscribe. She's about to pull up. Hi, Jacob. Yeah, she has her stroller, bro. Oh, she has a kid with her. Yeah. Oh, wow. What's good? Hey, Let's go. You? Oh, wow. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. How you guys have you been? been amazing. You guys like slid around the side. Oh, yeah, because I don't want to bring the stroller up the stairs. Oh, no, all good. This is Milo. Oh, my God. So cute. So cute. He's three and a half months old. Wow, he's cute. Thank you. Say <laughs> hi, my mom. That's, now that's he's a, looking at adorable you. baby. Really? Yeah. Really uh, do you think he looks like me or no? I feel like Hi. he doesn't look like me that much. You guys have the same nose. Hi. Really? Yeah. Wow. I wish I had his lips. He has beautiful lips. He has so much expression. Same eyes that's, too. Like, oh, he has brown eyes. No, but like shape. Oh, the shape, yeah. He's got so much expression. That's what I've heard. He's been very, um... Oh, oh that's so cute. Yeah, smile. <laughs> No, you. Oh my God! You can't put it on there. Okay, no, okay. No, but he smiled. It was so cute. Hi. Gonna smile for us? He goes everywhere with you. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, the only place I can't take him is the gym, so I have a nanny watch him when I go to the gym. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. That baby, dude. I want a kid so bad. Fuck. He gives everyone baby fever. Oh my kid. He loves listening to Rick Ross. Like. Yeah. That's his favorite music. Rick Ross. Wait, but it goes on. Is he like? Is he like extra with his hands? or something how do you know she like smiles he's like that's my shit oh this is she, she needs no intro what do you oh, mean thank you. She, she needs no intro thank you yeah well thank you for having me on your podcast absolutely i've been wanting to have this conversation for a while with you for a while yeah well i've been living just like all over the place so i actually haven't been back to la in i think over six months as well it's my first did, did you back. avoid it for some reason Okay, so this is what happened. So I became pregnant. I thought I was going to keep doing everything that I was doing. But the hormones and everything that happens to you when you're pregnant is so crazy. It made me just like, I really like isolated myself when I was pregnant. And I didn't want to be like be on camera anymore. It was really, really weird. And yeah. I thought that it was the best choice at the time to isolate myself and like pull away but i've actually realized that's super unhealthy and i yeah. wish i would have just kept living my life the way that i was but however i didn't choose to do that so that's why i haven't really been posting so i haven't been to la um and now like three and a half months postpartum i'm like just starting to feel like myself again to so. get back into it yeah so what 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 like i guess mediums like is podcasts you like what kind of things are you going to start making content in again um like, do you so, plan to do vlog stuff again? Do you no, plan to? I, well, for whatever reason, I can't shoot my own vlogs. I like being in other people's vlogs. Yeah. But for me, it's just such a pain. And like, I don't feel like they're good enough when I shoot them myself. Wow. That's funny because that's like the most common, like beginner YouTuber feeling is like you shoot some, like most people shoot content and they're like, like when I first started, I shot it. I must've shot like seven videos, eight videos, maybe even 10 videos. And I was like. No, these are trash. I'm yeah, not posting any of them. That's how I feel every time. Like, I'll get an ad for like $50,000 for mine. And then I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't do this because I don't want to my post blog this. is shit. Yeah. 
And so I end up giving up money just because I don't want to put out something that's like embarrassing or that I feel just isn't up to my standard. Yeah. So what about the podcast stuff? Would you Are you going to continue that? I do want to do a podcast. Because you were good on it. I do want to do a podcast because I genuinely enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And I felt like it helped me improve a lot within myself. Like you learn so many things from the guests that you have on or the research that you do for the podcast. Yeah. Also just listening to yourself talk you realize things that you need to improve on like using less filler words the way that you speak and so i really yeah. like that aspect of having my own podcast so that's why i might do one again just in a different direction i don't really want to be in like the like influencer drama space or like talking about gossip or any of that because i did get in a little bit of like trouble like i would talk about people anonymous an- anonymous anonymously anonymously Anonymously. So you, got, you almost you were so I'm close. Not gonna go to say it's all that. good. Anonymously. I have trouble with that word. Um, which is something that I need to work it's on. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, so I was talking about people without using their names and people just started like putting two and two together. Yeah. And then like, oh, Lana said this about this person. And so like I just don't wanna yeah. talk about personal stuff like yeah. that anymore. Yeah, and I mean it's I mean that's the thing on the internet. People People also like to make things about themselves in any situations that they can be like to pull it to like make it something more than it is, whether it be mm-hmm. for like cloud or for views or for something like that. Yeah. And, and you that- you became like at one point with with Mike, um, not not that this was a bad thing by any means, but you became at one point like one of the biggest like quote unquote cl- clickbaits on, on the Internet. Yeah. On the vlogs and all that stuff. Still, I guess I still have it, though, because I just shot a video with him and it went trending. Again. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. So what, what do you think it is about you that people find like that are so like they're so into you? What do you think it is? Sorry, this is. You can rock him a little bit. Harder. Yeah, rock him. Come on. Daddy duty, Jacob. Let's go. No, you're not. I've been watching you in the you're side of my like eyes. A little like pussy rock like it's barely. Anything. Yeah, dude, you got to get some muscle in there, man. No, don't hurt him. Yeah, no, don't shake him. Just kind of. This is so funny. This is so funny right now because this is oh, like. So you can you can try to give him the binky too. Should. Can you please be a father right now, Jacob? Come on, you need this, dude. You got your your sister's having a kid. We need you to step this up, man. This is so I, funny. I feel like the people listening won't mind though because they're all super intrigued by him. Yeah, the baby is is like a very. He's more famous than me. Right? Yeah, everyone wants to know. Yeah. Everyone wants to know who the father is. You don't. Ex- you don't say this. Um, I mean, I'm fine. Like talking about this situation. Yeah. Just something that I haven't really talked about. However, again, I want that word. I want to keep him anonymous. Yeah. I said that one right. Yes. Um, anonymous, just out of respect for him, because that's what he's asked me to do. Got you. Okay. So okay, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to pry more than that. Um, let's. I want to ask you though about what it what it's like being a mother and like dealing with you know the internet and the you know the everything that comes along with it and obviously like keep keeping your kid off of it and people are all curious who the father what's the relationship like how did this happen um what is that like and you're so young which is another thing that's another thing that kind of blows my mind yeah i was 24 when i became pregnant with him yeah now i'm 25 so I mean, I feel like that's a good age to have a kid. The only downside is, I guess, that what I do for a living revolves around my appearance <clears throat> and the way that I look. So that's been extremely difficult. Just, yeah. I don't really feel comfortable. I'm just starting to feel comfortable, even though I'm not where I want to be yet physically. In your body. In my like, body, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to just, you know, put myself out there, which it's a struggle for a lot of new moms. Just yeah. they're. Like, I didn't get stretch marks. I don't have extra skin. I'm extremely lucky, but I am 20 pounds heavier than I was. I feel like my face looks different. And the reason why it's important to talk about it is because a lot of moms who had kids also feel the same way. Yeah. So that's been a struggle being young and having a baby and then also having social media as a career, being a model, like that type of thing. Yeah, having to to perform or look a certain way or be perceived a certain way so that you can continue to post content. Everyone's going to tell you how they think that you look. Yeah. You know, they don't care that you just had a baby. It's like, oh, you're fat now. Yeah. You look older. I mean, this is such a crazy thing, though. Like the Internet in general is just it, it's a place where all sides of every story are never really told. And people just kind of pick and choose the mm-hmm. points that they want to like analyze or like hyper focus on. And then. Oh, yeah. I've experienced that so much. Yeah. Like you can do so much positive 
or something can just be completely different and you can even tell people like no this is what happened but people are still going to go with like the mean version or the negative yeah. version why do you think that is why do you think because i've experienced this so many ways my own my own way and i've experienced <laughs> not uh, i mean i think uh, similar things in some some projects and some aspects that you've you've experienced but people they i don't know it's like they want the truth but then when they're told the truth or when they they hear the truth and then they they don't they want it to be something almost like more nefarious or something bad like it they're, they're more drawn to yeah. the negativity in a situation well, than that's scientifically proven that people pay more attention or and are more drawn to negative um, things that's why social media purposely like those things i guess go viral or they're like more put into the algorithm um it's been shown on social media with like statistics yeah so it's just that people i guess find that more interesting yeah yeah so and no one wants to make an article about like um bradley martin saved a drowning homeless person like no one cares about that it's bradley yeah. does drugs and steroids <laughs> yeah they, they want to it's it i don't know why it's that way i mean i guess i i i see why people look for the the bad in situations i i feel like it's more related to like I don't know, people are maybe avoiding certain situations in their own life. So they, it's easier to look outward and be like, everyone else shit's fucked up or that's going on. Like you look, it's easier to look for bad outside than it is to look for like the own, your own bad inside, you know, yeah. the things that you need to work through. I mean, even what would you click on? You know how like news stories pop up notifications on your phone? One's like this person just got married and is so happy or this family of four murdered like which one are you gonna click on yeah you know i think that's what it is i try and avoid that shit completely to yeah. be honest because that shit to me I, I see it and i see it for what it is and i'm like i know there's no there's like i'm not even like trying to go into that i don't even want to put myself into that because even mm -hmm. i've even as i've gotten older i've been like watching less and less like horror films watching less and less just anything that is like feeding that negative in my yeah, mind i do that too especially with music i used to listen to a lot of like sad songs and sad music but i just want to feel like good and happy all the time yeah. i think it's great like to push that negativity out in every way that you can yeah just to preserve that a good mindset yeah like you were saying i work on that heavily and, I, and as i've gotten older it's become more and more important and I actually notice a really big difference. So the less that I involve myself, this baby wants to be on the podcast right now. That's what it is. So being like being a mother, is it what you thought it was going to be when you were a kid growing up? Because um, you know, like, what I was never, your perception of being a mom? You know, so I never thought that I would be a mom when I was a kid. Um, I never thought that I would like boys either when i was a kid wait what what do you mean i always told my mom like i'm never getting a boyfriend and i'm never gonna have kids i just want a bunch of dogs <laughs> <laughs> like just because like you just weren't interested in them or it was like yeah i just was never interested growing up until maybe like 17 i was like i want a baby yeah. and everything changed and i was like i want a boyfriend too <laughs> so 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 being a mom though like what is it what is it actually like and you're a single mom essentially yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I am. um what is it like is it, is it what you thought it would be like it's way easier than i thought that it would be and it's way more enjoyable than i thought that it would be yeah um he's also a really great baby like he hardly cries he does like to talk a lot and yeah. he screams in like a talking way is that something new that he started doing this month um but, you know, I've struggled a lot. Now he's burping. <laughs> um, I've struggled a lot um, just with, like, depression most of my life. And so one thing that I was scared about with being a parent was will I be good enough because of my depression? Like, there were times, like, I've had a lot of pets that I've taken care of. And there were times where I just, like, I can't get out of bed. And I know the dog's going to, like, pee on the floor or something. But I just felt like I couldn't get out of bed. And so that was one of my fears as being a mom. Like, what if my baby needs something and I can't get out of bed? But after having him, that fear completely diminished because he, like, he's all that I want to, like, take care of and do. Like, it was n it's never a problem to wake up at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Yeah. to feed him. And so that fear 
was completely irrational because he just became the most important thing to me as soon as I had him. Well, I think depression a lot of times for, for some people, I don't know how you, this came about in your life or how you got depression, but it's sometimes related to a lack of purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And obviously having a kid, it's like, it's a very clear purpose. purpose. Yeah. So it's like, of course you'd have the thoughts are all, uh, uh, hopefully if I, I, I'll be able to be there for my kid and I don't want to have this, these like feelings not allow me to be there. Yeah. But that's like, that's like the most purposeful thing I think anyone could do, which is have a kid. Yeah. And I think the fact that I was having that fear about it just showed how much I care and, you know, have love for my child because you're scared that you're not going to be good enough because you love them so much. Yeah. Have you ever heard any other uh, experiences or times in your life where you felt like you weren't good enough? Um, besides relationship to the kid? Relationships? Besides, besides your relationship to the kid. So any oh, other moments yeah. in your life? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, definitely. I think everyone feels that way. I think everything that I've gone new into, I always thought that I wouldn't be good enough. Like even when I first decided that I wanted to go work at a restaurant like Hooters when I was 17, I was like, oh, I'm probably too ugly. They're not going to hire me. Like I'm not good enough. Um, of course I got hired right away. And yeah. then, you know, same with when I first decided to get into pornography. Right. I didn't think that people would think that I was good enough looking or that I would be like any good at anything because I was so inexperienced. Yeah. Um, but somehow I became number one in that. Yeah. Field. That's a, that's a, Shockingly. and you did that very fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause I only did that for like four months of my life when I was 19. Four months. Or sorry, eight months. Eight months. Yeah. Um, so that whole experience, do you, do you ever think, cause you know, everyone, you know, everyone has such a negative uh, view on that. Not everyone, but mm -hmm. a lot of people have this like perception of, you know, or when you have a kid or what are people going to think? Like, what, are, what is your kid going to think? Like all this kind of like, yeah. kind of like negative thoughts on that. Do you ever worry about that in relationship to your kid? Knowing like what his mother did or what, you know, you know, not at all. I myself am against pornography now. Um, from my own experiences. Um, but I think why, why are you against it now? I just didn't have a great experience and I don't think that it's great for other women or even men who do it. I don't think that it's great for them. What, what was, so was, what was bad about your experience? And I'm sorry, I just kind of, Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I just had quite a few bad experiences. So there's, there's different levels to it, obviously. It's mostly hardcore pornography that I have an issue with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind girls like, I mean, everyone can do what they want. I just don't think that they're making the best decision for themselves yeah. going into that career. But like the whole OnlyFans thing and like girls posting their nudes, like that's fine. Like it's just your body. But I don't think that having like sexual relations with people that you hardly know is good for your mental health or like your heart. Yeah. I don't can you speak? You can speak on that person. I'm assuming you've had. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were times when I was doing scenes that I really didn't want to do with people that I really didn't want to let touch my body. And why why did you do it? I just felt like I had already signed up for this. There's also a lot of pressure. So the agents. Like, if someone's going to do it, I don't think that they should have an agent. That's where a lot of the pressure to do things that you don't want to do comes from. Yeah. And being an 18, 19-year-old girl, it's you just don't know how to say no. You want to make everyone happy. And I was very much a people pleaser. And so I just, I just wanted to make my agent happy. I wanted to make the fans happy. I wanted to make all the directors love me. Um, so I felt pressured, and I felt like I couldn't say no in a lot of situations. And that's no one else's fault besides myself because I'm the one who didn't say no and I'm the one who didn't stick up for myself. So yeah. it's my own problem, but it is, you know, experiences that I have to deal with now. Yeah. So I'm curious about your childhood. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really talk a lot about like your family dynamic and you know, like your upbringing. Yeah. So what, what happened with your, I know your sister, she dealt with like a lot of issues yeah so my sister has she first like we started noticing that she was like different or mentally ill when she was like 12 and, and you I'm, were how old i'm three and a half years younger than her 
Okay, so, so you were younger than her. Yeah, so I was younger, but I sort of always played the role of like the older sister taking care of her because of how bad it was. Um, so her mental illness like progressed over time. At first, it was just no one in my family knew what this was, but she started pulling out her own hair. So she'd have no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and she started pulling out hair in her head as well. And well, she's like, pu- like plucking it out, plucking it out. And oh. then looking at, you know how there's like a follicle on it. Yeah. And so she was like fascinated by the white, like follicle at the end of it. So later we found out this is a disorder called dermatillomania, which is where you pull out. This is a real hair. thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. Oh my God. Um, so it's a mental dis- compulsion disorder. Okay. And so that was how her mental disorder like manifested itself first. And then came her um, anorexia. She had severe oh. anorexia. So she was also like bone thin. What the? Um, yeah. So imagine like I was very young. So I see this person who has no eyelashes, no eyebrows, like bald spots that they inflicted on themselves and extremely skinny. My sister looked like a monster to me at that age. I was scared to look at her. Wow. And my... I tell my parents you have to make her draw eyebrows on for me to look at her because I was so scared. I thought that she was like a monster. Wow. Um, this. Was, <laughs> wow. I've never even heard of something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are so many different disorders that people have um, that you know a lot of people aren't aware of. Yeah. And then I'm sure you're more familiar with like bipolar and schizophrenia. Yeah, of course. So then after that, she was diagnosed with bipolar when she started having suicide attempts. And then after 18, she became like very like out of touch with reality. And that's when we're like, this is schizophrenia. Did you ever worry that like you would have any of those things just because the relationship like genetically like, oh, she's my sister. Maybe I'll have something like this or. So I always thought that you know i got extremely lucky i got a good healthy brain yeah but i feel that because i saw such severe mental illness in her to like her mental illness is very very bad like the most severe that you can imagine like yeah needs to be hospitalized that type of thing still to this day um she's pretty much catatonic now which means that she's like you can't really even have a conversation with her she wow. she just stares off like laughs um maybe can give you like a yes or no so it's like to the full degree it's oh, very wow. severe um but because i saw her mental illness and how bad it was i thought that's what mental illness is so i feel over the years like i've had depression and i've had issues but i was like I'm not mentally ill. I don't have a problem. I'm fine because that's what mental illness is. So ah, I downplayed my own I because see. it wasn't to that severity. It was a comparison though. You were comparing that it wasn't it, because it wasn't as bad that like you that weren't really fine. dealing with something. Yeah. And that I don't need therapy or I don't need medication. So have you ever, have you ever gone to therapy? Have you ever done any of that stuff now? I've done, I've done therapy on and off and I am looking for like a good therapist to go to. It's just, such a leap to get over the hump and like yeah. find someone that you like and i guess i'm just like putting it off but i have noticed since having my baby i don't know if it's the hormones as well i notice like my moods definitely like dipping up and down i think more yeah, the hormone should. fluctuation maybe yeah. yeah or it's or it's triggered maybe something like underlying because luckily i'm very good at self-regulating so i notice like i'm walking down the street and i'm super happy right now and then 10 minutes later, I'm like, well, this whole day sucks. Or like, really? Angry. Like, it's that drastic? Yeah. In like a 10 minute period. And it's like, well, nothing happened. But because I'm so good at self-regulating and I know that those are just, you know, it's not actually what's happening. Right. I'm able to tell myself like, no, it's fine. You're good. You're going to feel better in 10 minutes, in well, an hour when you wake up tomorrow. How, how do you think you learned uh, that ability, like of self-regulating, like you being able to understand that this is happening to me, this is how I feel, mm-hmm. but this isn't exactly what's going on. Like, where did you learn that from? I suppose just, I wasn't really as aware of it, but I guess I have been going through that for like years. And so uh, just from experience, you realize like, hey, I felt like this before. And then I like 10 minutes later or the next day you were happy again. So just ride it out. 
Damn. It's just from experience. Yeah. That's really important you say this though, because I can look back on all my anxiety, my moments, my panic attacks. Yeah. And that was one of the things that really brought me solace was I realized in the beginning, it was always like, this is it. This is because I always had a fear of death and my anxiety was revolving around that. And I was like, this, I'm going to die. This is the moment. This is the thing. And it would be to this crazy degree where like my heart rate would like increase like physically to a crazy amount because I'd be so worked up, so worried. Yeah. And then it would always pass eventually and I'd be good. And it would happen time after time after time. What are and some then, like, examples of things that would like throw you into that? Oh man. I, it, it was, I, I hyper focus on things. So like I'm a very like my mind's very, very active and I'll hyper focus on things. So what would happen to me a lot of the times is I'd lay in bed at night and I'd feel my heartbeat mm -hmm. and then I'd, like I'm going to have a heart attack. Yes. And I start to be like, wait, did it skip a beat? Is that normal? Is it beating too fast? Is it beating too slow? So I and and I can't even. Yeah. A lot of times I'd end up crying <laughs> and the times I couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't differentiate. Like I just kept thinking like something's wrong with me and. Yeah. And then it would just kind of grow the, the, the worry would grow. And then like, I would get almost somewhat erratic and I'd have to like, I'd either be like calling my mom or like calling a girlfriend at the time. And next thing you know, like I'm calling the fucking the ambulance and, <laughs> and the, the, then they're like, they're like, they put the, the EKG thing on me and they're like, you're good. You, you need like an Ativan, which is like a anxiety medicine. Yeah. And, uh, I realized over how many times it happened to me, that was the thing that brought me real sauce. Like the same exact thing you said was, this happened and it wasn't the last this baby's so fucking cute Hi, i'm over He's here to you. oh my god so this wasn't the last it, it's like it's it's not going to be my last time because it was like you know a hundred times that it happened and i was like okay I'll, I'll be okay and then i started to learn that and it was it started to change my life because i was able to recognize it yeah but i That's have a question key. i have a question for you w what's your relationship like with your father so my mother and father got divorced when my mom was pregnant with me. So my mom was actually a single mom as well. Yeah. And my parents had a really rough divorce. And um, my mom just was like, we knew she didn't want us to like our dad. So it was... Now at, so at what age were you when they got divorced? Oh, so you, there, you were in the bit, you were a baby. I wasn't born yet. Yeah. You weren't even out yet. Yeah, so I didn't go through the divorce, but we had a really nasty like custody battle when I was older. And now becoming a mom, like I just don't really get where my mom was coming from. The situation that I have like with my child's biological father is like I would never want to cause any harm to them or their life. Like I don't even take child support or anything yeah and there's nothing wrong with taking child support if you need it however i don't need it and so i don't want to be um you know take it just to be spiteful or yeah to, i understand um, what's the word i'm looking for or just take advantage of the situation yeah. yeah like that's not me and so now when i look back i always thought that it was normal the way that my mom acted about like custody and the divorce and like I feel so many women get spiteful as well when the relationship doesn't work out and they involve their children in that spite which is something that I don't understand like me and my sister weren't allowed to like our dad growing up because my mom would get angry and yell at us basically so you you thought you you felt you weren't allowed to like your dad because she would be like you'd she say something like what would furious. show you that um, like if, if you were like, oh, I want to go see dad, she'd be like, you shouldn't want to see that guy. Like, is that kind of stuff? We would never be allowed to say that. Um, so this is so bad, but my mom, so we would go to court for custody and my mom would feed us like lines to tell the court about my dad. And we would have to, you know, we just wanted, she was our mom. We wanted to make her happy. Of course. And so I feel this stress also is what triggered my sister's mental illness. I was so young that I didn't even, I didn't even really know what was going on, but my sister was sort of like leading the way, like we have to do what mom says and we have to not smile in the birthday pictures with at dad's house because it'll make mom mad. Do you remember that? Her saying that to you? Like that kind of stuff? My, my sister yes. saying that? Yeah. And then I do remember my mom like in the car bringing me home from like preschool and she's like, so what are you going to tell the court on Wednesday or whatever? To me, I just, you know, I've always been like, I, I don't really hold on to things. So I just sail through things in life. So it didn't really affect me. 
that much but now becoming a mother myself and having like the situation that I have with his biological father I just don't really get where my mom was coming from or where a lot of women are coming from that act that way with the custody of their children or like in a divorce being like spiteful. why like why do it in a negative such a negative way yeah like if you have problems with the father, like take that up with him. Don't bring your children into it. Yeah. I think it's a different, it's a different type of manipulation, right? Like there's something that happened there that she felt resentful for. And then, but why would you want to hurt me and my sister? I'm not I saying it's the right. Kids should be completely left out of it. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I also respect the wishes of his father not to, reveal his identity online like i don't want to cause any issues for my like son growing up or i still don't even know how i'm going to address that situation to him because he's not involved whatsoever so the father yeah he's not involved with zero zero like money nothing nothing oh. no money i'm not seeing milo anything okay and that's by his choice or by your choice oh no that's his choice okay yeah and so however despite how I feel about like the whole situation, if I feel that it's, I was wronged or not, I want to keep the, be as respectful as possible and keep the best relationship that I can um, and be as kind as I can. Because what if Milo grows up and is like, I really want to meet my dad. I don't want to affect the relationship by me acting in a way that would make his dad never want to meet him if it was a possibility when Milo was older. And I think this comes from what you've experienced though. Possibly, yeah. yeah. And so like now that I'm thinking about things that way, I'm like, why the heck did my mom do that? Like I always yeah. thought that it was normal. And like you hear about a lot of women acting in that way during a divorce or custody or whatever. And I just, I don't get it. Like your child should be the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the, that's, that is the most important thing. Uh, I have a question for you. You said something that I found interesting. You were always able to like let things go. Mm -hmm. but where did you learn that though? Because you, if you're able to do that even at a young age, it's like who was teaching you that? I think that it was just a natural ability that I've always had. I've always been extremely resilient, and just on like if something bad would happen, I'd just be like, okay, on to the next. What's the solution? What can I do next to make me happy? It's sort of just a built-in personality trait that I have. Yeah. That's, I mean, damn, that's good. So there's no, there's no like thing. No one taught you that. No one said, Hey, this is how you should look no. at things. No, it just naturally. Yeah. So you, you, you have your son, um, you're gonna keep making content. Yeah. Right. Um, do you, do you ever worry that like, like I asked you kind of earlier, do you ever worry like of the, you know, what's going to happen when he's, you know, 12 years old, when he, when he's 15, 16, are they ever going to like say, Oh, your mom did this and that. You don't worry about that kind of stuff. What would you say to the people who talk like that? It's such a long time away. Yeah. And also I think if you have a parent who has made a lot of bad decisions in their life, it's something that you can look at and you can hear those lessons and be like, okay, I'm not going to make the same mistakes that my mom or dad did. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's amazing. This kid is like, like, he's really drawing my attention. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's, he's a cute kid. So, um, in, in relationship to, in relationship to Mike and, and the stuff that you, and I'm not make switch and switch the conversation a little bit, but the content that you made, um, over the years, mm -hmm. did, how did that affect your career overall? Cause I know it was like you, you came from the adult industry yeah. and then what I would say, obviously, you, you were one of the most popular adult actresses very fast, right? You were yeah. number one. And then you got onto the social media space. Like, I guess it was like Logan had this like reveal type thing. And then you like blew up in the space and on Mike's vlogs. Mm -hmm. um, how has that changed your like direction of your life? Because I feel like that was something that like completely changed. I mean, unless it was like already in that way, you were already on a certain path. Yeah, so essentially I had done adult films for eight months at 19. I had met another like Instagram, YouTube guy, not affiliated with Mike or Logan. And I never like shot content with him, but he was telling me like, I'm making $15,000 to do an Instagram post or like for this YouTube ad. And I'm like, well, I'm getting paid $1,200 to do this scene. How is this fair? And I sort of realized that I was being taken advantage of 
okay. like doing sex work for an amount that people are getting paid way more just to post the picture on Instagram. So I completely quit doing adult films and then I actually became number one porn star from expanding my Instagram. So I focused on growing my Instagram. I would post every single day and the algorithm really like picked me up yeah. um, because of the way that I was posting and the content that I was posting. And that made me number one on Pornhub. So it wasn't so it wasn't so much the porn itself. It was the the it was the, the social media exposure. Okay. Yeah. And then you started then you started doing vlogs and stuff with Mike. You guys obviously started started dating. Like, where did that like did that? Because I feel like that from my perspective, looking at it, Mike's channel blew up. But you also like took off to like a different height, you know, like uh, yeah. numbers wise and all that. Yeah. I mean, I, I already had like. I think I had like 8 million followers on Instagram before, so before now I have almost 17 million. Yeah. Um, but I did notice a big growth when I was first in Logan's vlogs, but it did help um, people see me more as a person and the yes. positive attributes that I have outside of, oh, she's just like hot or I just want to fuck her. Right. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing in social media. Like the, the two people that I think about, and I think you guys are actually both working on the same platform. Um, is Mia Khalifa? Oh, did they? Um, I'm not sure. I think, I think we on signed center. her on Centerfold. So yeah, yeah, she has in her bio. Okay. Um, but you two are the two that, like, outside of that, you guys, like, took this a whole new life on social media. Mm -hmm. Like, to a crazy degree. Yeah, she's done really well for herself as well. Um, and she's been retired from that industry even longer than me. And she's managed to make a career up until this point and ongoing, which I think is really inspirational for other girls who might have made the same decisions yeah. and knowing that they can become successful outside of that and that there is hope you don't have to keep doing something that you don't want to do yeah i have a question for you what what do you think you're most um proud of yourself not in the sense of achievement wise um in the industry or on social media or in that but just in life like what do you think you're most proud of yourself of in life it's right here right here yeah this baby <laughs> I'm so proud of him every day. Like, even if he takes a poop, I'm like, you are the most amazing creature <laughs> yeah, on the planet. You make me want a kid so bad. <laughs> oh, man, I want a kid so bad. I'm getting Someone, fucking old. <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, oh, it's so enjoyable and amazing. Someone was just asking me yesterday at the Playboy office, like, aren't you, like, annoyed you have to change his, like, poopy diapers? And I'm like, no, when you have a kid, like, you feel proud even of them, like, taking a shit. You're like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, like, like it, every time he smiles when I'm changing his poopy diaper because he knows that I think that it's, like, amazing and good. So I'm, like, cheering him on. It's beautiful. Um, so so the, the, play, the Playboy thing, what are you, what are you doing with them? Oh, we do so... Um, I have a friend who works at Playboy named Holly. She's been my friend for like half a decade now. Yeah. So I used to work with her um, at Hustler. Oh my God, beautiful. Oh, did you like the people at Playboy? Yeah. He met all the girls there and they were so nice to him. Um, so she, when she moved over to Playboy from Hustler, because I used to work with her at Hustler, that's how I met her. Um, we she bought me in i started working with them on just all of their projects so we yeah. do clothing together um we're all i'm also part owner in the new platform that they have um center folds yeah what what is that because I, um, I see the pictures i don't really know exactly what it is though is it is it launched yet is it like yeah so it's already we did a soft launch okay um we're doing a few tweaks to the platform before we do a hard launch and like really start promoting it heavily but essentially, I guess the most mainstream thing to refer refer it to is OnlyFans. So it's like an OnlyFans platform. However, we do not allow um, penetration or sex. So you can't post whatever you want. It's just nudity. Okay. My, I love it. Um, I have a profile on there. And I also help onboard other girls. But my content is more so like I have like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he wants he to be wants part of the conversation. He wants to tell you. Um, I post like my my skincare routine, like. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk? My travel guides. Um, just you know, a little more insight into my life than you can see on my Instagram. Yeah. 
So my profile is very PG. I feel like he wants me to hold him. I wonder if he'll. I feel like that's what it is. I got it. Oh, gosh. Oh, hi. <laughs> now you're definitely going to, like, get some girl pregnant after this. Yeah, 100%. So you can have one. Oh, oh, my goodness. You okay? Good? That's mom over there. Hi, baby. That's mom over there. Hi. This really made me want a kid. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> have one. He's like, wait, that's my mom? Yeah. Who's holding me? <laughs> Yo. Oh, my God. You're so cute. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, he's smiling. Oh, smile. Mommy. He's smiling so hard. This is a big moment for me. Really? Have you held a baby this young before? Yeah, my my half sister. Yeah, Faith. What about a boy? A baby? Not a boy. Not a boy, though. That is different. I've never held a baby boy, no. He was the first newborn baby I've ever held. He seems to love that you're sitting over there right now. And, and he can look at me. And he can look at you. Yeah, and he likes listening to me talk, too. So this is the this is the thing where you're like, this is the thing that I'm most proud of. Yeah. What what have you learned, though, in, in your life that you're most proud of yourself? Like, what, what, like, what feat mentally you're like, I'm glad I finally figured this out about myself? Um, yeah, so over the past year with all the... The past year for me was really difficult just because I did choose to isolate myself essentially for almost a whole year of my life. I barely yeah. saw anyone. Um, it was just a very lonely and like... I was wondering what you were doing. I was like, this she doesn't oh, post anything. Like, Just not like in a great place. I just yeah. wanted to have the baby here, not be pregnant anymore. I had an extremely rough pregnancy. Um, so I went. What well, do you mean rough? Like just because like, physically. Okay. I was so sick. Um mentally and physically okay so it just was not a great time for me and i just could not wait to not be pregnant anymore um and so i just wasn't living my life at all because i was like i'm gonna live my life after i have the baby which i see it, no one should do that regardless of what you look like or how you're feeling you should always okay. you shouldn't isolate yourself and you should live your life every your life is so short you should enjoy every single day of it yeah. however when you're in that mental state it's very hard to see that um, so the last year I had a really rough year, just like alone. And then I had my baby, which was the best day of my life. And I'm not sure which one it was, but I'm able to be happy now with like essentially nothing. Like the things that I thought were imp important before or that made me happy, I realized are very unimportant and actually did not make me happy. Like yeah. physical things. I'm living a very minimalistic life nowadays like i just rented a trailer not a trailer home or a mobile home that i'm gonna live in for the really? next year yeah and i barely own anything anymore i sold all my houses all my cars i'm super into like sustainable clothing all the clothing that i buy now is used and then as soon as oh, I'm that's done awesome. with it, i sell it um i like to have just very minimal things and i've realized that getting a lamborghini or getting all of these doesn't mean shit it's yeah it's really just to show off to people around you it doesn't make you happy yeah like i could move to a, a shack in hawaii with him and be the happiest person in the world so i think that was oh also another thing that i've realized that it can really lift you out of depression and make you feel better when you're not feeling good is service to others and so that's something that i focus on a lot nowadays and those two things like really realizing the importance of of things in life instead of focusing on the things that aren't yeah has changed my life dramatically and i think is i'm happy that i'm finally to this point because for a long time i was just doing things that i thought would make me happy and they didn't and it sounded like you said you were doing things that you thought would make other people around you happy like trying to make up please other people like you know like you're talking about earlier on in your yeah. career like the agents the people who are part of your life like oh i want to make sure they you know they're happy in what i'm doing here doing there and yeah. you're never really focusing on yourself i mean even even at a young age it sounded like you were focused on trying to make like your family dynamic happy with your sister and take care of your sister in a sense mm -hmm. and it's like now you're finally getting to a point which it's it's beautiful though because you're still so young to have figured this out at this point yeah some people still takes 10 20 more years to be like okay this is what really matters in life yeah. but you figuring out how to like actually live for yourself and make yourself happy and you realize how simple it actually is is like it's just the minimal things That's like you true. said if you just lived in a shack 
but you had your kid, you had everything you needed, you know, food, shelter. That's all that really matters. Like nothing else really matters. Like, yeah, I think your health, your yeah. family, this kid, I want a kid. So I'm so sorry. This is, this is, I'm, how comforting is that? I love this. I'm, I just had to say this. I like love a this. natural anxiety soother too. Like when you're holding him, I feel like you feel less anxious. I'm sorry. Do yeah, you I feel that way? I feel amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little ball of happiness. He's definitely changed my life. So, so sorry, continue. Oh, I was just saying the things that I find to be most important are your health, your happiness, and being the best person that you can be to other people. Yeah. Simple. The simplest things. Mm -hmm. I just wonder why we, we tend to like get ourselves so caught up in like all the other stuff. And I think social media has done a lot to create this draw towards a lot of things that are not really important, but be our, but are perceived as like, oh, you should have this or you need yeah. this or you need this attention. You know what? I think things are going to start going in the opposite direction. Like a lot of people who have a lot of money and are very successful some chase more money once like once they get 10 million dollars they want 20 million um but i feel some people like elon musk for example once you have everything what do you oh, do man. next that's the big question you buy twitter he yeah, <laughs> yeah. by twitter he actually lives i've heard below the poverty level so he's also very min minimalistic yeah i think he lives in a um tiny home or some sort of small minimalist space yeah well they will say people watching this will be like but he has this multi-million dollar thing in texas and because they're all this other stuff that they he does have other properties yeah. okay. but i know i i think what you're saying is right i don't know exactly mm -hmm. um i think that's his main residence though the one he in lives, texas no the um the one that he actually lives in yeah the small, the small house or it might be a mobile home as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, what do you do once you have everything? And I think it's going to be a trend over the next year. People not like wanting to flaunt their wealth on social media and more so being more conservative and sustainable living. I think it's yeah. going to be a big thing over the next year, just in fashion as well, because I'm very, um, I do a lot of clothing stuff. And so that has really been i've noticed like a huge spike in yeah. it just vintage clothing thrifting clothing like it's the cool thing to shop at goodwill now i'm dying right now i gotta go pee like a baby <laughs> i'm so sorry yeah. all right oh my god you got him yeah i got him kids do things to you that are so different like i don't think i should have held that baby because like i really want to have a baby now now i have been, I, you've been saying that for the longest i know but like, the minute i held that baby pull the, trigger. <laughs> the minute i'm I, telling him though i feel like he's no, next, I want a boy. Thing you know, I wanted a girl and I got a boy and I couldn't imagine having a girl now. So wait, so, sh yeah. should I say I want a girl so I get a boy? No, <laughs> like, I, think, like, I, I don't know, but like, you just look like a girl mom. I mean, a girl dad. No, I'm getting, no, I, I want a boy. Does look like a girl. No, stop he it. Looks like, he looks like a girl dad. No. Yeah, I, like I can see him like dressing up his boy. girl in like tutus. And, no. Like, <laughs> playing tea party with him. No. Because he'd be so protective of her. And the thing is, is that thing, yeah. the way... Just a lot of things would change in general. But I, I, I want, I, I need, I need. You get what you need in your life. Like God 100%. gives you what you need. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I've always so, wanted I mean, two boys. Have a boy too, but like I think you'll have a girl first and then a boy. Also, it just doesn't matter. Like we all have this image of like what we want our kids to look like and what yeah. gender we want. And then once you actually have a kid, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't like, yeah, it really doesn't matter. And you just think that they're perfect. Like he looks nothing like what I thought he was going to look like. But as soon as I saw him, I'm like, you're perfect. Beautiful kid. Thank Beautiful. <laughs> but let's go talk, talk back about what you're saying about the, um, the minimal, the living minimally. I find that so interesting. Like my brother lives in a van. He's lived in oh, a van really? for the last, like before it was a cool thing. He lived in the van for the last, I don't know, eight years. It almost seems like oh, now. Eight years? Yeah. Maybe seven, seven, eight years. Um, or it might be five. That's still like, that's half a decade. Yeah. That's it might be five. Very long time to live in a van. Yeah. And, um, there's something that I do find so intriguing about that. Cause the, the idea of living minimally is, I think one of the most powerful things, I think it's one of the most important things too. Cause I'm not saying you need to live in a van to experience this, but yeah. 
like you said, you think there's going to be a shift. And I fully agree in the next like few years where people are going to be more focused on like what actually matters. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like in life, everything comes in cycles where it's like, everyone's focused on this and not, not to say that people aren't going to be focused on making money at that time as well. But I think it will become more of a, a prevalent thing for people to be like, well, I don't need as much. Like I don't, I don't need as much. And maybe there'll be more people willing to talk about like not, not needing it. Yeah. And also just going back to like fashion, like, so there's trend forecasting for fashion, which usually is so like in light speaking about lifestyle, over yeah. the past couple of years, you know, e-com really took off and there were those kids Massive, posting, yeah. posting on social media like, I started an e-com business and here's all my cash and these are my five Lamborghinis and now I live in a big house and I'm 22. Um, so that was like sort of the trend over the past couple of years. And then usually things go from, in trend forecasting, they go from one extreme to the other. Yeah. So because that was like, so extreme like being a millionaire and having yeah, here's all my money yeah now it's like very refreshing to see the opposite and so just going off a trend forecasting standpoint i think that's what we're going to see being like way more po way popular and trending in the future yeah do you think that has the same thing that same concept will be will be with uh I, the ideologies about like like you said and not just the idea of flexing everyone's like flexing look at my stuff look at my stuff and then more people actually talking about what actually matters, meaning like the type of content that the people make, or do you think it's going to shift towards, um, I guess in a sense, more wholesome, more people talking more about the things that actually matter. And then that having a rise in what's actually popular, meaning are more people going to start watching more of that content? Or do you think, cause when we were talking about this earlier, are people still going to go towards the negative and the, you know, yeah, so I think in order to get to that mindset, you have to go through a personal experience like yeah. I did. And so if the trend shifts to that, people are still only going to be doing it because it's what's popular right now. And Fucking they want crazy. to do the popular thing. So they're going to post, oh, this is me living in my trailer park because that's what's cool right now. Yeah. You know, so it might not necessarily be for everyone because they've had this life epiphany or realized what's really important in life. They're just going to do it because it's cool yeah. and it's trendy. Yeah. And then it will. <laughs> so it's like kind of disgenuine. <laughs> yeah, sort of. I mean, that's most of social media in yeah, general. Here. I'll hold on. Hey, he wants me. <laughs> This is so cool. I got you, man. I got you. Well, nice and quiet over here. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We're doing the mic thing here. She's doing it different over there. I want oh, kids I, so bad. Am I in it enough? The microphone? Yeah, I think you're doing. You're doing good. Yeah. So, um, I just whoa, you little head nod there. I'm uh. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he like flings his head. Yeah. He'll like, headbutt you. Wait a sec. You about to try to knock me <laughs> out? <laughs> he loves this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm really trying to figure that out. Like I, I really, and I know it's time for people. Like it's timing. It's always about like, I know you just find me so interesting right now. <laughs> it's always about timing of like, you have to go through something to, to know that, okay, this is my time to finally understand it. Mm -hmm. I just wish that, I don't know. I just, I guess wish I, I wish people were more open to the stuff that is, it's not as clickbait. It's not as cool. It's not as yeah. like car. It's not as flashy. It's not as gr the girl, you know, and more open to really trying to learn about themselves and like their direction in life before like they're hitting the face with life and then they want to know, yeah. you know, like proactively. I wish people were more proactive with that part of their life. It, but it seems like it's just a human nature thing that you just, you can't be, you have to get, you know, it's almost like you have to get hit in the face. You have to learn the lessons. Then you start to look for that well, kind you know of like. They say? they say smart people learn from other people's experiences and dumb people i guess like me because i always learned from my own ah uh, shit i did too <laughs> um yeah so a lot of people aren't like you said they're not searching for answers or ways to improve themselves or their life until they've hit rock bottom yeah. you know in depression or just feeling like their life sucks to seek out a new way of life yeah this is amazing so I have a question. What's the question? So in regards to like social media and stuff and you living like a more minimalistic life, mm -hmm. um, the glamour and the attention on like YouTube, social media, I know you're still doing like the centerfold and everything. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do like more like not so much mainstream, like doing like businesses such as that? 
or will you continue doing like in, like vlogs and all that? I know you said like you don't like doing your own, but yeah. Do you see yourself doing stuff like that? Yeah, I was too? gonna ask you about business stuff. So I'm more in like a business aspect, especially I'm getting older now, and then like, you're I, older. You're I fuck. Wanted, you're what are you yeah, talking like, about? You know, you're back, so young. I have a real like problem with body image as okay. well. So like getting older and having a baby, it doesn't for me. It doesn't work with like being in front of the camera. Okay. So I have wanted to shift more into the business aspect so I don't have to be in front of the camera as much myself. Although I... But you're still super young. Yeah, I mean, I'm 25, but... So young. In, like, social media age, like, that's kind of old. I know. I'm I'm about to be 33 this month. (laughs) Holy shit. Imagine Brad and Mike. I'm like a dad. Look at this. Yeah, you're a dad. (laughs) You do business stuff, though. Like, you have your gym. You have... I feel like you're very much on the business side as well. Yeah, I have. And I have... It's always been a focus of mine, to be honest. Like, not that I was like... I came into this. I'm like, oh, I want to do this and make money. But I always remember... Actually, I'll tell this story. So, wow, he's so happy. Yeah, he, uh, I'm here. Oh my god, you're so cute. You're he so said, cute. "Yeah, I am." You're so cute. I know I'm here. So, when I first got into the industry, uh, fitness stuff, I remember I wasn't as popular. I I can't even. This is so fucking. I've never been this distracted in a podcast before, but I don't even care. Um, wow, this baby's adorable. I really want a kid. So I had, I, um, (laughs) sorry guys. I, I wasn't as popular in the very beginning, obviously, like you kind of, I was doing competitions and like, um, fitness competitions and I was growing on social media and I was one of the first people to grow on social media, but the timing wise was like, there were other people who were more popular in the industry, not on social media. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Not on, not on social media though. They were, this is so funny. The balancing act of, I know. Looks to me all day long. He so, wants to join your conversation. I know. Okay. You could, we got, we got this together. So the balancing, the balancing act that's going on right now is crazy, but on the competition industry, there was a guy who was really popular and he, he doesn't have much social media. And I remember I asked him cause he was on some certain, I'm not going to name these people cause I don't want to cause any like issues for these people. But mm-hmm. I was, uh, I reached out to one of these guys who was one of the top competitors at the time. And I was like, Hey, I'm looking for sponsors. Yeah. Right. I want, cause this is when I was like 22, right. Just, just competing. I wanted to make some money. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I, it was always something I was like kind of struggling with at the time. And I said to this guy, and again, I don't want to say exactly who it was. I don't want to say what position he had, but he did well in competitions at the time. And I was like kind of just getting into it. I was still on social media, but two separate things, competition and social media, right? Yeah. So in the on competition. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Okay. So Instagram like had the just very started. Very, beginning of Instagram. Very, was a very, great time to get on. Very, very, very beginning. So, but in the competition industry, he was more popular, more well-known, more connected. And I said to him, I said, hey, um, I'm looking for sponsors. And he said to me, Oh, we don't, we don't need anyone. And he said in a way that just felt very like, just rude, very, very rude, extremely rude. And, um, I was like, okay. And then I remember I started getting popular on social media and I was one of the first people in that industry to ever give, I I remember I was the first person in the fitness industry to have 10,000 followers and I'd go to shows and they'd be like, that's the guy with 10,000 followers on Instagram. This is like, now everyone has millions, but this was back in the day. Yeah, things were different back then. And then that's when they, they would start to like, hey, you want to come like be a part of this? I know. You want to be a part of this? And then, like I've said, they didn't care about me when I had nothing to give to them. Yeah. But as soon that they can get something from me, they came back. What? And I remember thinking like, okay, I... It was a little bit of a spiteful thing. I was like, all right, fuck these people. I'm going to do this all on my own then. Yeah. And that's what made me get on the business tip of like, okay, I'll just start my own clothing company. I'll start my own thing. I'll start my own business. Because, you know, I realized that people were just kind of shitty. And I was like, okay, I'll just do it for myself then. Yeah, I've sort of had to do that in a way as well. Because there's opportunities that I want that are harder for me to get because of my past profession. That, you know, if I was someone who had... 17 million followers and you know the engagement and the popularity that i do i would for sure be able to do these things if i was famous from something else yeah but i'm not so 
like you said, just like starting your own business. If there's something that I'm interested in, I'm not going to let other people tell me that I can't do it because they don't want to work with me. I'm going to start my own company and beat them out competitively. Yeah, absolutely. Make my company more popular than theirs. So have you, have you met anyone or do you have any people in your life that like that have that teach you business stuff or that show you stuff or that have like opened up your mind in that sense? Um, I mean, I get inspired every day by things that I see that I would like to be part of. And yeah. then my manager is really great. She knows a bunch of people in all different fields. So she's able to connect me with the right people to help me on those ventures. Yeah which has been very helpful because in the past when I did not have a manager or that support, I would have like a really good idea, but then I would spend way more time necessary, like launching a business or sourcing products or doing the things that I needed because I didn't have people to help me. Yeah. So it's definitely important to have the right people around you on those ventures. Yeah. Having the right team. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, that's sometimes the most challenging part though too, Mm -hmm. because I mean, you could find people who, you know, are self-serving or don't have the right intentions or... Yeah, I, I mean, that happens a lot, especially in this industry. Um, if you make people a lot of money, like, they always want more. Yeah, I've experienced that. always a problem. But you just got to put your foot down, which is one thing that I've learned over yeah. time from being someone who would never say no to anything or anyone to now, even if it's hard, you have to say no or be like, hey, why do you think that you deserve this percent or or yeah. that? You got to be your best advocate in all circumstances. Are there any situations you could speak on specifically about that? Like um, any, any situation you're like, you like to I mean, try just, to get taken advantage of? Just anything now. So one thing that I did learn over the past couple months from the whole nft like thing was just saying no when i'm not super comfortable with brand like saying no to money or sponsorships or deals that i don't know much about or you know it's not really in my lane like this project i originally said no to not because there was anything wrong with it i really thought that it was going to be great for everyone involved and i I experienced just, something very similar. Was, yeah, I saw very that similar. you did. And yeah. that also, like, mine was very, very public. But a lot of these projects, they're just they're just failing. And then because people aren't happy that what they invested in failed, all of a sudden it's a scam. I had the best intentions possible. Yeah. I was working the, literally the day after I gave birth on this project. Like, I put so much effort into it and I really wanted it to succeed and do well. I even gave you and my other friends, yeah. um, what's it called? Um, pre-sale mint yeah. Yeah, or white list. Like I gave it to a bunch of my friends cause I thought that it was going to do well for them. Like yeah. what was spread in social media about it was just so people could get views off my name because I tend to go viral and they made up stuff that I deal with the same shit same shit in the same situation like I had experience with these I it was ultimately my fault because I made a decision um just not so much prematurely but I trusted basically people that I shouldn't have trusted Mm -hmm. and I had a similar thing these two kids that were came with the idea and I was like wow that's a great idea so when I was thinking about doing NFT it was exactly what mine was is this whole ape thing Mm -hmm. and uh but it was a jacked version of it which I was like, okay, that makes sense. It's on brand for you. Yeah, very on brand. And uh, I I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I want to be a part of this. And it wasn't like I was trying to get paid to get promo or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the kids were like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do all this stuff, all this stuff. And then as soon as we dropped it, I don't think the kids knew they were getting into and how much money that was going to be there. Or maybe they did and maybe they were just trying to be shady. But yeah. eventually what happened was they tried not to pay two of the other people who are bigger partners in the group with me. Mm-hmm. They were like main marketers for that, like in the NFT space. Yeah. Kicked them out. Then they got vocal and then they started talking shit about it. And then I had to come back in and talk to those two guys, these two younger kids and say, hey, what the fuck are you guys doing kicking these people out? Like that is like a, a, a main mover in this whole project. Yeah. And they put work into it. And they put work into it. And they put their time into it just as I did. And it's, it's so crazy because these kids out there were just going to kick them off and like just, I don't know, dip. But I ended up having to like threaten to sue these two kids to give the company basically back to us 
so that one of the other guys who was in the project, who's still leading the project now, could manage it properly. Mm -hmm. But of course, everyone looks at me like, oh, that guy's a bad guy because I have the biggest name yeah, in it. you have the biggest name, even though yeah. you probably, like me, I wasn't responsible for these, like it was never part of the deal for me to be responsible right. for like the, the roadmap and the discord, the money. Yeah. Like I never had access to a wallet or anything. Right. I was just being paid the percent that I was told for being part of the project. Yeah. Um, so very much like you, it was just, well, we had an... So what happened? I had to sue our, these fuck. I had to try to threaten to sue these kids to get really? the money back to the project so that they can continue doing the project. They're still doing the project today, really? but it's like I had to I had to do all this shit. But you didn't sign up for it. No way. Yeah. I signed up because I thought that w there was we were gonna really do these things, and then all of a sudden they just like I wake up one day and they're like the two guys are hit me up like yo they kicked us out of the company they took us out the Discord I'm like what are you talking about and I'm playing damage control trying to figure out what the fuck happened and none of this was ever brought to my attention until like people are talking shit about me on the internet yeah. and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And even to this day, kids talk shit about me. It's like, yeah. you don't, you don't know the story. You don't know the whole story. And it's just, it's just frustrating. And even if you tell it, they're still going to run with the other version, of course. which is what I've experienced. Cause I've literally said it a million times, what my intentions were, how it was supposed to go and the facts and people don't care. Yeah. That's the thing. But that's what we were talking about earlier. People, it's like they want to live in that negative space. And like mm -hmm. I said, is it because that there's something else in their life that it's easier for them to look at you and other people that they look at as, you know, influencers or celebrities or whatever yeah. and look at them in a negative light so that you don't have to look at yourself in your own real light and figure out your own shit. Yeah. It's easier to point fingers at someone else. Yeah, I don't really understand. And then, and then the kids on the internet that talk shit is like, you're literally doing this just for views, yeah. just for money, which is another funny thing. It's like, Hold on, you put you you put your name in a title and my or my name in a title, and then you try to badmouth me or you yeah. in relationship to something that you don't actually know about, just so you can make money. Who's the real scumbag in that situation? Well, and the fucked up part was, I mean, I don't want to talk about anyone specifically, but the person who started it, they had information beforehand, like they knew that I didn't scam anyone, and they still chose to do that video. And I had like just had a baby two like three weeks prior like i don't know why someone would do that and choose to cause that type of trouble or drama for yeah. me like i was getting death threats because of it like for their own benefit yeah for their own benefit and it's like but this is one of the biggest problems on the internet yeah no. in general when people do stuff like that though it's no reflection of you it's obviously something inside of them that is wrong so I just try to not focus on it and just move forward. You know, yeah. that's the it's best just, that you can do. It's frustrating. Everyone was like, oh, you should sue them because what happened was they made a video. Then everyone else was like, let's get views off of it too. So then other people made videos, other people wrote articles and it became another viral thing. And everyone was like, you should sue because it was quite damaging yeah. for the time. And it was really stressful having people like threaten me like, a month after I had a baby. Yeah. But my mom always told me growing up that like suing people was wrong. And I also just wouldn't want to go through that process because that would force me to live in a negative mindset longer than I would need to. Yeah. So you just focus forward. Yeah. Just focus forward. And I've been in the industry long enough that I know that these things just, they eventually smooth over. And the reason why it didn't get to me as much was because I knew that it was absolutely untrue and that I would never do anything like that. Like, I'm always like, how can I help other people? I'm always very generous. Yeah. I had people reaching out to me when these articles were coming out, people that know me, and they're like, this makes me so sad that people would say this about you because you're the opposite in real yeah. life. Especially, That's it. It's always the people who really know you are like, this isn't right. Yeah, like, this is crazy. And, like, people are like, this makes me so sad that people would say this about you. Yeah. So I, I didn't really take it to heart besides like some of the like the threats honestly were really stressful for me. But besides that, I don't care what people are saying online, especially if it's untrue. Yeah. Because why would you care? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. It's just frustrating sometimes because it's like, I don't know, I, I guess over all the years of me doing stuff, like I felt like I've always only tried to put out good stuff. And it's like the minute someone could tweak something for their own benefit so that yeah. they look like a good person. You look like a bad person. It's like, yeah. that's their number one priority is like, Oh, I can, I can get something out of this. 
and the people who view it, they don't understand that that's the reason why the person is doing it. They just go, oh, they're talking bad about this person. That person's bad. Instead of like, wait, you're just doing his name and a title and this, this for to views money, to make get money. Views and yeah. Get articles written about you. It's, it's just a frustrating thing. And I just wonder, like, is that ever going to end on the Internet? I don't think it will. You just I think have to not engage with it. And I think if you don't put any energy into it, Somehow I feel like the universe sees that and then less people will put energy into it Like if something's negative or bad online, I'm not going to click on it I'm not going to give it a single more like another view. Yeah, because I don't want to add to the algorithm picking it up Yeah, no, I get you that makes sense um, So what other businesses what other things are you working on right now? I Besides do. the centerfold thing getting so back into vlogging. I'm doing a lot with playboy um all their clothing um, and they have a few sister companies as well they own a couple of lingerie brands so I've already done a lingerie line with their sister company Yandy which is sort of like a fast fashion I saw this um, yeah. lingerie so I think we're gonna be doing something else with them in the future and then they have another um, lingerie company called Honey Burdette. You've probably seen a lot of girls on Instagram. Um, they do a lot of stuff with influencers, like all the hot Instagram girls. Do What's Honey it called? Burdette. Honey. Honey Burdette. You'll Honey definitely Burdette. see it like after this because now you know the name. Yeah, my so, phone just picked that up. It's gonna, it's, yeah. it's gonna go there. Playboy bought them a little less than a year ago as well. Okay. So um, I do a lot of things with all their clothing. Are you involved have, in these businesses like Playboy right now? Yeah, are you involved as like a like a owner? Um yeah, so I was given shares in Playboy nice. last year. Nice. So it's not just like a get paying you to do stuff. You're like No, no, we're like fully partners. Partnered together. Amazing. I mean, obviously it's a very small percent because Playboy is a huge It's already massive, company. yeah. Yeah, it's massive. It's been around for decades forever and decades forever and ever yeah um so yeah i do have um a somewhat of a partnership with them and on various things and um i don't get paid like per posts by them if that makes sense i get paid like percents of what yeah. i do and then i have like shares that i get paid distributions make sense yeah um what's your like relationship with mike now did he help you with business stuff because he's a very smart guy um, when we were dating, he would get me like brand deals and yeah. stuff like that. But I've sort of elevated beyond that into having actual businesses yeah. of my own. Yeah, for sure. Is your relationship with him st still good? We Honestly, we don't talk that much. Yeah, that's what I, when I tied him on the pot, he made it sound very similar. Yeah, we don't talk very much. Like he, sometimes I'll, I'll do like a vlog with him just because I want to, you know, help him in yeah. any way that I can. Yeah. So just like that, if I need something. Which by the way, me. thank you for coming on my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You're helping me. No, I really appreciate it. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I wanted to. No, I didn't really sure. think of it as like charity. Work. No, not charity, but it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I just appreciate it. I know you don't have, there's, you, you get to choose what you want to do at this point, you know? Yeah, definitely. So I, I'm grateful. That's all. No, you've always been cool. And like, I, I've watched some of your podcasts and you seem genuine and fun to talk to. So yeah, hell yeah. I love it. So you, so you guys just don't, you guys don't speak really much. No, like if I, if I need something, I'll ask him and he'll do it. And then if he needs something, he'll ask me and I'll of do course. it. Yeah. Of but course. other than that, it's pretty transactional. Actually. Yeah. 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 For sure. How you, so are you're not you're not dating anyone else? No. Not seeing anyone else? No. Just just a baby? Yeah, I, I don't really have a desire to date anyone at the moment. At yeah. first I was like, I'm not pregnant anymore, like I just wanna get on with my life and like, you know, date people and then I don't know, that just kinda went away and I have no desire for like sex or dating or anything. What's your else. main focus? You besides the baby, obviously. I know you'd say the baby. <laughs> besides the baby, what what is your main focus? Outside of that, probably my list of priorities are probably the baby, my health, and then work. Yeah, I love it. Work. That's simple though. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah and just like enjoying every day. Yeah. When when before you had the baby, what was the what was the list of priorities? Were you ever not probably, focused on your health? Probably not really, because I didn't have any. I never experienced health issues until I was pregnant. Okay. 
Um, probably it was boys before. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god. Like doing things to make myself seem more appealing to boys. Like even like my career stuff. Like I would do so that people would like look at me differently. I guess like my focus really was on other people before. Yeah. And I felt like I had to prove something to them. Like going back to having done adult videos, I always felt like I had to prove that I wasn't like a giant horror basically to the right. entire world. I just don't feel like that anymore. Like it is what it is. I'm at peace with all of my decisions now and I no longer feel the need to. When did that, when did that fade away? Just, I don't know over the past. I'm not sure if it was the like rough year that I had or just having Milo in my life, but I, <laughs> it's, it's a funny answer. Cause like you said earlier when you were younger that you, like you did, you, you told your mom that you were like, you didn't think you were going to like boys. And then you grew up and you're like trying to do everything for boys. Yeah. And, or other people to make them happy. Yeah. And then like wanting a boyfriend and like wanting to be loved. You know, actually that might have went away because now I have an even better love in my son. Like yeah. it's unconditional. And like I have someone to cuddle with every night now. And just I love him more than I could ever love a man. And also he's so young he he really needs me right now and so i wouldn't want to invest time into a relationship that could possibly fail and not benefit milo in any yeah. way and it would take away from teachings oh, and yeah. quality time that i could spend with milo you think that having the babies taught you more about loving yourself as well though i think i think that more so came from the past year of my life because i really just hated myself when I was pregnant and you can't live like that. So I had, well, what did you hate though? Just the way you felt or like the way that I, my mind just changed from all the hormones. Yeah. I, I thought that I was, I mean, a lot of physical changes happened. I was also really physically unhealthy. I thought even like my ankles were hideous and what? everything was off. Your ankles? Yeah, even my ankles. What's like, wrong with your ankles? I would look at any part of my body and just thought that it was disgusting and horrible. Wow, you're crazy. And That's wild. Yeah. Brad, you never heard of cankles? Yeah, of course, but she's got great ankles. She got nothing wrong know, with her ankles. But like, I'm assuming that's what it is because women's feet tend are you to saying swell she, are you pregnant. Saying, they are swell you, up. Yeah, yeah they I had swell a lot up. of fluid I don't know. swelling. My face still isn't completely back to normal. My face like really swelled up with water. Really? Yeah. And so this was really... I always thought that I wasn't very vain, but I realized... <laughs> you were like, wait a sec, what's going on? The weight gain and the the water retention and the health issues that I had that made me considerably less attractive oh I realized gosh. what an emphasis I put on being physically attractive and it's something that I'm working to focus on less now yeah because yeah. it's to an unhealthy degree uh, was it always to an unhealthy degree or like yeah I've, I've had body dysmorphia for a really long time yeah and so it's just one of those things also that you have to self-regulate and be like other people who are overweight, they have boyfriends and they have friends. People aren't not wanting to like, they don't think that you're disgusting and horrible like you do. No way. And so I would see people walking down the street in New York and I'm thinking like, oh, I can't hang out with people because I'm too fat. They're going to judge me. And I would see someone who has like they're overweight, but they have like this really hot fit boyfriend. I'm like, people can still love you even if you're not. Yeah, Super. not and the also, I, what the ideal yeah. is thought of. And some of the things too aren't like it weren't even wrong with me that I see sometimes. Like what things? I mean, I see things like horribly sometimes. Really, like just in life in general, or just about yourself? About my appearance, but oh. it's it, I've had this condition for a really long time, starting since I was oh. fourteen. I thought that. Like my nose was way too big for my face. I thought that I was deformed. Really? And yeah. Like I'll look in the mirror and just see a deformed person. And when people would tell me that I was pretty, I used to think that they felt bad for me because I was deformed. <laughs> it's it's so messed what? up. What? They felt ma bad for me because I was deformed, and so they would like tell me that I was pretty to like just be nice. Uh, I have a question. Well, that's crazy. Go ahead. So my question is, is because like you're uh, beautiful, by the clear, way, clearly, yeah. you know, body dysmorphia is a thing. We all have yeah. it. I mean, I would like to say I think we all have it to a degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, to a degree. And so my my question is, is like, 
Did you find yourself feeling this way about yourself because you heard stuff constantly like growing up, whether I'm not saying your mom did this, but like just examples of like your mom being like, hey, oh, you're overweight or like just saying things or pointing flaws out that you started picking up as a child. Like your mom would be like, oh, I'm too fat. And like, did you start catching on to that and it like rubbed off onto you or like just outside sources or is this just something on your so own? Mine came about from a, a trauma that I had around that time and I my self-esteem was really lowered from the trauma and that's what triggered the Wait, body dysmorphia what age and what trauma um I was like 13 or 14 what trauma it's something that I haven't like I have never talked about online do you you're not comfortable talking about it I don't know it's just I mean, the funny funny. thing is that it's not even as bad as other things that I've gone through in my life. But for some reason, this one was just the one that really affected me. It's it's strange because I know I've been through way worse. I got to know what it is. We could cut it if you need yeah. to. So I'll note it right now. I, kn- I know some other, like, some other celebrities have, like, talked about having a similar experience, like, Paris Hilton recently came out. She was sent to a boarding school when she was, um, I don't know how old she was. I didn't really listen to the story in full detail, but I saw it on social media. She was sent to a boarding school where they like just treated her inhumanely. And so when I was 14, I was sent to a boarding school as well. And I actually don't know if I can talk about it. For some reason, like, it's not even the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it's just, it still, like, affects me to this day. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get I I mean, I don't get it. Obviously, I can't relate directly to it, but... It's, it's just a lot of, like, physical abuse. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for asking the question. Yeah. I did not mean I, to make I you want, cry, I promise. I want to someday be able to talk about it, but yeah. he's smiling. <laughs> Um, but I don't know. It's it's just so weird because I know it's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me, but it was the one thing that caused me to have, I think, a lot of the compulsions and um, mental dis like mental dysfunction that I do have. Yeah. I, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to go yeah. deeper into it. I don't want to cause any. Yeah. I mean, long story short, it was just like physical abuse at a boarding school. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jesus, man. Well, you've 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 grown into he's smiling. You've grown into an amazing person. There's yeah. no doubt about that. You have an amazing yeah. son. You have a great heart. It very it seems like that way, Thank at you. least from what I can tell. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I mean, you've you've obviously really grown from that to this point, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's so. the one thing that I think about as well. Any trauma that you go through in life, I would never take any of them back because oh, it went 100 percent takes you to a better point in your life and makes you a better person also gives you compassion for others which yeah. is very important yeah my my life is <laughs> it's like a good story of that yeah. um so i fully i fully can relate i fully can understand that and people listening i think it's really important for people to know that like whatever you are going through in your life at any point it doesn't always have to make sense to you like because that's the thing especially when you're going through the negative stuff it never really makes sense to you it's always in hindsight. It's always looking back when it makes mm-hmm. the most sense. And um, I guess my advice would be just like, just keep going. Yeah. Just keep going. And at some point, even the shittiest things. They become positive. They yeah. always become positive. Yeah. And like you said, you can't see it when you're going through it. But then afterwards, you're like, okay, I see why this had to happen to me. Yeah. And I'm happy. Like I almost see the bad stuff that I've been through as a blessing. Oh yeah. Because I it's turned me into an incredible person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have anything in my life if it wasn't for what happened to me when I was young and what I went through. Yeah. I wouldn't have any sort of life experience to speak, to share, to give, to to do any of that. I wouldn't I wouldn't have any of that if I didn't go through. Are you okay? Really? Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe he wants his baba. Here you go. You you hungry? I actually have questions for you. Oh, yeah, go. Yeah. So I've listened to like some of your experience with your dad, right? Yeah, my your father. Dad. So obviously I had, you know, some similar things growing up with my sister trying to commit suicide in front of me like multiple yeah. times. Um, 
did you like did your dad have any sort of like mental like was there any like foreshadowing to what was coming like did he have any sort of like mental disorder or dysfunction prior to that so the story as i understand it and from what from what my mom has told me is my dad um at the time of his death was completely sober number one which was always news to me and i was like kind of shocked by that i thought he would have been on drugs or something like that when he took his life but he was completely sober but he had been going to like a doctor for depression and they mm-hmm. they said that he was like clinically depressed yeah. so like his serotonin levels were completely like bottomed out like this he he wasn't so able to like feel a, it was like a chemical a chemical imbalance, imbalance yeah. yeah um and i know he he i don't know how exactly he got there but what i understood is that his his um his dad passed away and then he felt like he had this he never got to say things to his dad that he wanted to say and then his mom passed away shortly after and he had a similar like you know relationship with his mom where it wasn't always the best and i think he felt like he didn't get to say things he didn't get to like kind of um speak his piece or like amend that before she she left his life as well and i think he held a lot of resentment and he just it just must have just cycled through him to the point where it's like caused this you know this breaking point of clinical yeah. depression and um you know that's it oh fuck <laughs> Sorry, was it a hard question for me to bring up? Yeah, it's all good. But um, no, it's fine. It's I, the the reason why I get emotional. I think about it. It's like I always wonder. Like one of my one of my biggest fears, and I asked you kind of this earlier without any real reason why you would have known. But I've always worried. Like, would that happen to me? Mm-hmm. Like, could I get to a point like that? Because genetically, obviously, we're we're similar, right? It's my father. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, damn, what, what if, I, what if I go through enough, like, hardship or enough stress or enough anxiety or enough like these negative feelings that like I get to a point where there's no return? Because, because that's the truth. Like, he got to a point where stone cold sober, he he ended his life. He hung himself. Like to put yeah. to put something around your neck, and to he was in his garage and to step off a car with like I don't know, he had like a some yellow fishing wire, and to hang yourself is like the craziest concept to me is like you had to put it around the thing. You had to think the entire time you were going to do this very clear mindedly that this is going to happen. I'm going to stand up here. I'm going to put this around my neck and I'm going to end my life. It's going to be over and it's going to be over. And I have to consider all the circumstances, the fact that he has two kids, Mm -hmm. the fact that he, you know, he was divorced from my mom at the time, but he still had a, you know, he still had that relationship with her and he was ready to just say fuck it all because he felt that bad. And I worry sometimes that, that I would get there. I think, though, you can think to how it made you feel that your father did that. However, it is really crazy what a chemical imbalance can do. Because that's what you're saying about the way you feel and yeah, the like hormone fluctuation. When I was pregnant, it took me to a place that I never thought that I would be at as well because I've always been like pretty happy and go lucky and able to get over things. And it just took me to a place where I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to see anyone. And I never thought that I would be like that either. So I guess you can't really, you can't really predict those things. However, it goes back to, if you can, in those moments, self-regulate and also think about when it comes to suicide, I think it's a lot more pain. It's more painful for the people around you. And you could think about how that made you feel when your father did that. I, I know this is hard to think about also when you're in that space, but I never understood why people who wanted to kill themselves, why they didn't just say, okay, I'm not going to live for myself anymore, but I'm going to live to be a benefit to other people. Like Even if you're at the worst place in your life, why don't you dedicate your life to people who need you? You know, You don't have to live your life for yourself if you can't. Why don't you go to an orphanage and volunteer until you feel better or, you know, go to Africa and like save children, like give all your food to children. 
Um, there's so many things that you can do to help other people that need you if you're suffering and you don't want to live for yourself anymore. And that's why I never understood wasting your own potential in your own life, even if you don't feel like you have any one person like you can help so many people if you dedicated your life to that. So why take yourself out of this world when you could help hundreds of other lives? I think it's I, hard to think like that, though, when you're when you're in it. Yeah. And I, I think that's what it comes down to. Right. Because I can think of a moment in my life where my hormones were completely fucked up yeah. of my own doing. And I wasn't aware of why or how I got to that point. And I remember this so clearly where I was. I remember I must have been it must have lasted for about eight months of my life. I remember driving to the gym. This is like right around the time I first opened my gym. I'm driving to the gym and I'm thinking like, damn, did I just did I ruin like like the hormones and stuff that I've been doing, like, did I ruin my life doing this? And like, I remember driving to the gym thinking like, if I feel like, if I keep feeling like this for another year, I'm going to die. Yeah. I was, and I'll explain to you what, what, like what got me there. But, um, I remember getting to a point where it wasn't even like I could think about any other option, the way that I felt like the way that I felt when I, when I say depressed and feeling depressed, it wasn't like, I'm sad about my circumstances because like this girl left me or I'm sad and like I don't have money. It was like I didn't feel anything. That type of depression that I felt was like I didn't feel. It was like if you stabbed me, I'd be like. Yeah, you just you, felt like an emptiness. You felt empty. So uncaring. you can't think like, oh, um, you know, there's other people that I can live for. You think that it's just nothing matters. Yeah. Like nothing matters. And I felt like that before. I felt like that for about eight months of my life. And I was like, if I keep feeling like this, I'm going to die. Like I'm, whether it's like, I'm not that I was going to kill myself. I have had thoughts like that in my life. Like when I was younger, but I think also this is because you had that experience with your dad. I have this too because suicide was so prominent for me growing up when something bad happens or I'm feeling like that's instantly what pops into my mind. Like you should kill yourself. And it's really common for people to have intrusive thoughts like that. Um, do you feel Do you feel that way too? Like, yeah, I, I've had moments like that. Because you were so like overexposed to it, it was a huge thing that happened in your life. But, but here's the difference: I have moments like that in my life now, but it's very like short. Mm -hmm. This was happening to me for. I'm gonna explain to you eight what months. happened about eight months, where I was like, "This is gonna be it." Yeah. And the reason why I, I wasn't, and I wonder this about my father sometimes. I wonder if. He had just got his hormones like fully checked, like a full panel mm -hmm. if he didn't check. Because at the time, I basically had, when I went and got my blood work done, I had testosterone that was 14. And typically for a male. It should be a lot higher, right? Yeah, it should be about 250 to 900. So I had the testosterone of like That's, a 14-year-old oh girl. And now here's, so the, now here's the crazier thing. My testosterone was 14. My estrogen, the range is somewhere like. 40s is kind of high 50s yeah. high right 50s very high yeah. you don't want to be past that guess what my estrogen was my estrogen was 349 what the how was it because you were doing um yeah so i had, I, had, I had fucked up my no it wasn't that i stopped it was it was wait so that happened while you were taking tests or yeah yeah that's how if you're literally expired. injecting okay expired so there was like one of the craziest moments in my life because i remember I, my, my biggest issue was I, I was avoiding forever just checking it yeah. because I was afraid. And that was the thing I would tell anyone listening. Like the biggest mistake I ever made was because avoiding were you taking the test unprescribed or at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you were afraid to yeah. go. So I was afraid to look. So the, the best advice I tell anyone is like, you have to get your blood work checked. So I, I'm curious if in, in my father at the time, I wonder what his levels, I'm not saying like he needed to have crazy testosterone, but yeah. I know testosterone is something that if it's very, if it's very low, there's so much dysfunction as a man and as a woman, right? If it's yeah. too low, your, your ability to deal with stress, your ability to, to sleep, your ability to like all these hormones to be regulated properly, just go out the window. Yeah. And I, my, my blood work was a mess because of it. And I was so afraid to look at it. And I finally looked at it. I was able to fix it and change it over the course of like two, three weeks did later. Did the doctor help you with that? Or yes. Did you, okay. Yeah. So I wonder if like my father, I wonder if he ever checked his hormones like on that level, would he have been able to, you know, not be in that position. But at the same it time. It wasn't as available then. No, I was. To do was, things like that. Now there's like so many health clinics yeah. where it's 
the first thing that they give you when you sign up for a membership yeah. at these health clinics is I just think you don't even think he no one was thinking about that yeah they're probably just like you're depressed yeah like you need medication yeah you should take this pill your, not the underlying issue causing it so I wonder if it would have saved them and at the same time though in my on the other side of my brain is like very clearly like like we said earlier if that didn't happen in my life like I wouldn't be the man that I am today mm -hmm. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to do anything that I've been able to do at this point because a lot of how I got to this point at least through my journey specifically in fitness was because of the resentment the the, uh, the emotion yeah. the anger everything that pushed me in the beginning before I ever shared my story and mm -hmm. shared my journey it was a thing that when I, when I was in the gym, I was like, um, oh shit. Like, I felt like I had to prove myself, like I was good enough, like I was worth it yeah. to be there for, you know, like I'm going to prove to myself that I'm good enough to, uh, <clears throat> to be there for. For you your know? mom? Yeah. And, and, and kind of in a sense to in a sense to my father as if like you know he had left me and i'm thinking well i'm gonna show him yeah because you felt why would you leave me here? exactly and i felt abandoned and it, and it definitely like just as a parent 100 percent, it was because of the imbalance in his brain because if yeah. he was thinking properly you would have been you know the most important thing and he would have realized yeah. that it has nothing to do with you and i know it's so hard because we're we're not in that you know that state but just like my sister for example her mental illness and her chemical imbalance is so out of control she's lost touch with reality so anything that she does you know you can't you can't take personal or think that it's a reflection of you yeah or that yeah. you're not worthy yeah but i and i and I, it's you know i really i really mean this when i say it now like i would not have what i have in my life if it wasn't for that so yes. to people listening too, at the same time, as much as it's like it had tormented me for a very, very long time in my life, it took about like 20 years for me to start to realize after being on the internet, making content like, oh, wow, I'm actually helping people because of the stories that I'm telling, the content that I'm making. And it was all a derivative of my childhood and my life. So that's, that's the thing that I think is most important is just understanding that whatever you're going through, like I was saying earlier, like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense right away, but if you keep going, eventually mm -hmm. it could really make sense yeah, and, and sharing those stories is an act of service towards others because it really does feel great when you've gone through something and you feel like you're the only one and you hear you know someone else on a podcast or someone that you look up to sharing the same experience yeah and that you do get through it and it builds tenacity that you know pushes you forward in life and gives you strength to be go and get the things that you want which i think you know struggle as well for me is what's made me so tenacious to reach for everything that i want and actually put in the work to to get it to yeah to achieve yeah. things because i don't know if it's that i like you felt like i have something to prove but i felt like i had like i need to have something you know yeah I totally relate to that. Yeah. It's a little therapy session that the baby actually <laughs> fell asleep. He the baby, the baby, the therapy too. Tired. Oh my God. Wow. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I always feel, I mean, the people who watch this must be like, this guy just fucking cries. This guy's a bitch, but no. I, uh, it's, I'm generally it's good to show your emotions. Yeah. I think it is too. I think it's necessary. As long as you're not like ugly crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as you're not ugly crying. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. I can't see myself. No, you know? no. You, okay. You, you had like a he pretty, hides like, his face. Look, yeah. Okay, cool. He hides his face in the camera perfectly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fuck, y'all. Um, do you have any other questions for me? That was pretty good. Um, you got me going on that one. I think one. I had one more thing to ask you, but now I forgot. This I know you're a podcaster. You're built for oh, it. No, I was just genuinely curious. Yeah. Because we haven't spoke about it yeah. before, and like I heard you talk about it before, and I sort of related to it. And I always love hearing about other people's life experiences as well. As yeah, well. me too. It's my favorite thing, just hearing about the things that other people have gone through and how they grew from it. And um, This is pretty much the whole reason why I have this podcast. The this podcast, is, this yeah. is my favorite thing to talk about because even this moment for me is cathartic in a sense. 
being able to feel better about my circumstances and whether it's helping someone or not, it's like, yeah. it feels good to me. And that's why I do it, which is really a, a picture of everything that I've done in my life. And it's just so happened that it worked out in a way that people liked it. I never did it to try to like, let me, let me like do this to like make other people happy. I just did it. Cause I was like, this is something that is genuine of my heart. And like, this is who I am. And this is, this is just, if I'm going to get on the internet, that's what I've always wanted it to be. And that's what you should be doing. Like, sure. You like, that's something that I'm sort of doing now as well. Like with my Instagram, like turned off all the likes and the comments because I'm going to post stuff that makes me happy that I like now. And why am I going to post pictures just because I, I think this one will get more likes. Yeah. You know, just doing things that genuinely make you happy and make you feel good, even if other people online aren't interested in it. Yeah. It's a tough, it's definitely a tough balance for sure. Cause like you still want to get engagement and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, it's as long weird. As you can financially support yourself. I just, I don't really care about engagement anymore. It's just all about yeah. just doing what like feeds my heart. Yeah. At some point though, you kind of, I mean, for people listening, right. At some point you kind of had to though, right. You had to kind of like play the game. Yeah. I mean, definitely when I was pregnant because there weren't many other opportunities coming in, I, I took like some brand deals or like did the NFT project that I didn't really have a ton of experience in. I think if I was able to do other things during that time, I would have been more focused on things that I actually enjoyed and loved. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, definitely I have, I have done that before, but when you come out of like a scarcity mindset, I guess, which a lot of people are in, yeah. where they feel like they have to do things, they have to support their family or they have to support themselves. Um, I'm very fortunate to be like abundant in my life to the point where I can help other people now yeah. because I've already helped myself so much and also just really focusing on things that I enjoy and love when yeah. it comes to career. But also I do have to say, I was talking to the people at Playboy about this. A lot of people don't know, like in Logan's vlogs and like on Mike's vlogs, we're always like, oh, Lana makes so much money on OnlyFans. I actually never really did the whole OnlyFans thing. So I never made like that OnlyFans money that everyone Wait, thought really? that I did. It, yeah, it was just like a joke. Like I, what? by that point, I didn't want to post nudes online or like do any of that. So I didn't do it because I'm always going to choose my peace and happiness over extra money. But, but you did have only fans, right? Um, I never posted on it. Like, yeah, I made an account, but I never posted on it. What the fuck? Yeah. So I, that was just like a joke for the vlog. I never actually really did only fans. Um, but what I was telling the people at playboy is that, I feel a lot of pe because the girls are making so much on OnlyFans, they become complacent with just making the money and not really pursuing their own passion or what they really want to be doing. And you're focusing all your time then on your OnlyFans when you really want to be designing clothes or you really want to be doing a podcast, but you're just complacent with making money, but you're feeling extremely unfulfilled. Empty, yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend investing all your time into just something that's for money instead of pursuing your passions. Because eventually, if you work hard at something, you will make money in that, too. Yeah. I mean, this goes for anything, not just anything. the whole OnlyFans thing. Yeah. As long as you're working, you're always going to make money. Yeah. I mean, and, it might and be a slower start, but yeah, you'll get there. People, I mean, people don't like to accept that. I think, I think they just, they, everyone wants it now. It's like this instant <laughs> gratification area. Everyone wants it. Like they see the young younger guys, younger girls, like in their early twenties making money. And they're like, all these other kids think I got to make it then I got to do it then. And it yeah. kind of drives people to that kind of stuff to do it. Maybe even prematurely than when they really want to, mm -hmm. I think they just like, they want the money more than they want anything. And it's, yeah. a, it's an interesting thing for sure. Well, that's cause they're still in like a, I guess a scarcity mindset. Like I need money to take care of myself and I guess money at some point can can be a passion. Like you think that yeah. your life your life would be so much better if you had this money or this car or this house. And then once you get it, a lot of people who have got it say, "Okay, what's next?" Yeah. And oftentimes, the best time of your life is like the climb to your goal versus when yeah. you actually get there. Yeah, that's a fact. Um. So I think what some people like myself have realized 
is just like not relying on happiness for those external things. Yeah. It's it's just not as important as people think. Well, it's a it's definitely an interesting concept because if you I think people focus on like it's just a weird thing. They focus on either just making the money and not how they're making the money and then then they like you said you get to a point where you have the money and you realize okay what really matters. Yeah. And I think if you can from the beginning start to figure out like okay what really matters to me and focus on that yeah to make the money instead of just thinking about making the money that's really how you should start right but people don't people go people go nowadays years just making money that you could be building a career off of your passion that then will make you money not only that like some people go the wrong direction because they they their perception of like how to make money is based on everyone else. Right. Yeah. Instead of like, what is really fulfilling to me mm-hmm. is only inside of you. It's mm-hmm. not just what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Someone might be doing something like along the line. You're like, okay, that might be fulfilling to me or it could be fulfilling to me. Mm-hmm. But like just looking at it from the outside and going like, I'm going to chase that. And then you, let's say maybe you even get there and you make some money and you look around and you're like, wait, this isn't fulfilling me. It's cause you never really went towards the thing that actually fulfilled you. You went towards something else that was f- trying, that was basically fulfilling someone else. Yeah, you thought looked good on someone exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I got to pee one more time. Sorry. I think, I think some, yeah. I had to go pee so bad. <laughs> like I feel so bad. I've never peed this. more than the baby. Yeah. It's, you know what it is? I, I think it's cause I started, I started taking a little more like a uh, astragalus, which is like a kidney flushing thing. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. That's definitely what it is. Cause that controls your bladder. Cause I'm like, what the how hell? How much water you outtake. Yeah. Or Are you a scientist? Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I really absorb information, especially about health. So, really? Yeah. Are you into like supplements and stuff like that? Um, so I have been just because I had so many health issues with my pregnancy and then like massive, massive weight gain. And then that causes issues with all your internal organs as well. I just noticed my body was not functioning properly after my pregnancy. So I've been on a journey over the past three and a half months to just like recover and I've done so much research on like diet and supplements that you should be taking and um fasting and you know ketosis and your mitochondria and all of that yeah so I yeah I'm following a really strict diet right now that's not necessarily just to lose weight it's also to improve my brain function yeah so I do do a lot of research into that oh I love it yeah that's awesome (laughs) That reminds me like when I was, uh, you know, it's so funny. I got I told this story before, but I want to tell it again in this podcast. It's funny because it reminds me you like you were kind of forced to learn more stuff, right? In a sense. Yeah, because I just, my body, my mind was awful. Yeah. yeah. So when I was 18, uh, my dick stopped working. Really? Yes. Well, that's something you got to fix. Right? Yes. And I was like, what's happening? But basically what had happened was, was that I... Prior to this moment, I was, this is, I was super into working out, but yeah. I didn't know enough. I didn't know enough about diet and about nutrition, about mm-hmm. how the way your hormones could be affected by that. Yeah. And I was very like, my personality is very like all or nothing. And so I'm doing everything to the craziest degree where I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm dieting, I mean, chicken with like no fat, I mean, cottage cheese with no fat. I mean, blueberries, I mean, spinach, oatmeal, no sauce. That was the crazy. That is the most important thing for your right. brain because your brain is mostly made of fat. Your brain and your hormones. Yeah. So I was eating like this and I was so crazy about working out that like it was to the point. This is when I lived at a Sacramento State. Uh, I lived in the dorms. I remember this shit like like it was yesterday. Actually, it's pretty funny. I would uh, I eat food at like the mess hall and then I'd go straight back to my room to like do like a hundred pushups and a bunch of curls. Cause I had like, cause this is when I was like crazy about working out, Yeah. but so crazy that like to the point where I remember trying to fall, this was a real disorder. I'm assuming that I know this was a disorder. I would like try to fall asleep. And at every moment of the day, what even up know? to sleeping, I was contracting my abs. Yeah. So you had an obsession, crazy obsession, yeah. which so I the, guess that's sort of an eating disorder. It's, it was. Yeah. And I got to the point where, I looking back now, I know what it is now, but I was like waking up every like seven, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour to go pee. My body was like eating itself because I wasn't giving it the proper amount of nutrients. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was, my output was way too high and it got, it got to the point where like my dick straight up didn't work. And I remember going to the doctor and he's looking at, and I remember now, I bet your 
your brain wasn't functioning properly either. Did no. you notice that? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was terrible. But I remember the doctor saw me, my like doctor of, you know, my whole childhood. He was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, are you eating? Like, he yeah. remember seeing my face was sunken in. I remember God. I was like, I was working at a, uh, like Abercrombie and Finch. I was one of the people who stood in front of the doors and like had their like shirt off and took photos. <laughs> that's what I was doing. Oh and yeah, like Do I remember how this like gave you the obsession. No, working, work, just the, the not knowing what to do, like yeah. eating wise. And like the obsession of training was just like, like I, it was an escape for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it became this like different obsession next to that, which was like, I can't let it go away. Because yeah. once I started to get it, I was like, I need to keep it. And so I felt like if I wasn't contracting my abs or if I wasn't doing push-ups after I ate or if I wasn't doing curls, like it was going to go away. I was going to lose it. And it was, and this has to do with loss in my life in general. It's mm -hmm. like not wanting to lose my father, lost my father. Yeah. The, uh, my, my relationship with loss has always been so difficult. Yeah. So, so difficult. You're and just clinging on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it completely crashed my hormones. And, but then right after that, when, you know, the doctor was like, he was like, try this like dick pill thing. And then like that worked. And then um, he was like, well, you should just be eating more. Like you look sickly, like something's yeah. wrong. And then yeah. um, that's when I picked up a nutrition book. And I started to learn everything about nutrition. I picked up a, a, a book about endocrinology to learn everything about hormones. And that's when like, I changed like my life essentially from that. But that's what got me so, because prior to that, I was really into working out because of the, you know, the aggression to let it out, the emotion to let it out. And it's still maintained that, you know, throughout. But when I was 18, 19 is when I got really smart about what I was doing. Yeah. And when I was like, okay, this is. I need the proper supplementation. I need the proper mm -hmm. food. I need the proper water. I need the proper sleep, all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, that was just an interesting story because like my dick didn't work and that was the scariest moment. Yeah. I think one of the scariest moments in my life. <laughs> oh no, I swear to God. <laughs> I was 18. I was like, what? Not I remember I had a girlfriend. Feeling like you were going to die? <laughs> okay, well, that was those two were equally as scary, all right? So like, it was something that's very important to you. So it pressured you into, like that was like your rock bottom oh, of yeah. your, your health and your physical health. It was something that was really important to you. Yes. So it forced you into really caring about your health yeah i remember i had my i had a girl at the time she comes over and i'm like my dick is like just fl <laughs> like it didn't she even probably was like do you not find me attractive yeah. yeah no it was like terrible i mean it was fucking it couldn't even it didn't matter how much i was like i'm gonna have sex it was just like <laughs> and i was like what's wrong with me this never happened yeah. and i'm like you know physically i'm in, in shape but my sexually because of the hormone fluctuation and how it was yeah. so so like low it was terrible it was crazy but now i learned so much from that yeah and diet is crazy too because there's so many theories on oh, like man. what method is best yeah it's so hard to decide which one is best for you i think everyone should just try different things and focus on not necessarily is this one making me lose the most weight but how does this make my digestive system work how does this how do i feel like my honestly i i think the best way to tell what diet you're doing is best for you is how your brain's functioning do you yeah. have a lot of brain fog are you thinking quickly are you able to just be your fullest self for sure um and for me that's really how i judge what i'm eating like for breakfast i eat 70 30 grass-fed ground beef for the fat content because i've noticed my brain functions on a completely different level when i eat that fat in the morning yeah yesterday i didn't have any ground beef and i had to eat hard-boiled eggs for breakfast i had so much brain fog today i obviously knew that i was coming on a podcast so i ate yeah. ground beef well this is the thing you said that is so significant to people listening um there's no one right diet mm -hmm. but you're exactly right and you're spot on 100 percent that you need to listen to yourself like listen yeah. in a sense Observe of yourself yeah take inventory because like you know, for, for someone listening, they might hear the ground beef. Oh, I need to eat the ground beef. But that might be the thing that just works really good for you. Yeah, they should try it for sure. Exactly. And see how it makes them feel. But um, I was plant-based for almost my entire life. And now I'm like nearly carnivore. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, that's the thing. I mean, this is people, I, people takes too much of like, okay, that person did this. Or that person said that. And I'm just going to copy it. No. Like you said, it's about, it's, it's about taking the inventory about how you actually feel. Yeah. Like, do, is your brain foggier? Like, mm -hmm. does your stomach feel upset? Like, how does your energy level, like, do you feel better throughout the day? If you ate something an hour ago, do you feel like you want to go to sleep? Or if you ate something an hour ago, do you feel energized? Do you feel mm -hmm. clear? Yeah. Then you start to, you start to, you know, okay, that's how I felt. Okay. That's how I, and then you go, okay, these are the foods that make me feel good. Yeah. 
Um, and you can get this stuff. You can get a little bit more detailed if you want to like go get like a, you know, um, a gene test. Or if you want to check like an allergy test, like this stuff will kind of give you more clarity on that, on those things for yourself. Yeah. But doctors still even are going to give you their opinion. And I find that most yeah. medical doctors, their idea on nutrition is very dated. Like I hate nutritionists telling people like, yeah, you should eat bread and, and like processed food. Bullshit. Yeah. Like in no way, shape, or form is anything man-made or processed good for you. And you can no. tell as soon as you consume it, it makes your stomach feel uncomfortable. It's There's barely any nutrition in it. That's the one thing that I would say, it's just not healthy. Like, that's not even one thing that you need to trial and error. Like, for sure. It's just not healthy. It didn't come from the earth. It It's not going to benefit. Well, this is like when I think about fucking cereal, like how they used to make cereal was like so healthy. Like, I remember being a kid, like I'm slamming fucking it's it's terrible. Healthy. I was slamming like fruity pebbles and they put like, like whole grain, like it's like yeah. fucking 80 grams of sugar. Yeah. It's yeah. such a crazy, I mean, but that's a it's, whole different it's marketing. Yeah. And I don't get why nutritionists like preach that too you need like carbs and you need this and it's all about that money the pediatrician told me to start giving my baby baby rice cereal to like wean him into food i'm like no way in hell am i giving my baby a processed carb yeah he's gonna eat like fruits and and vegetables and meat like fat i think is the most important thing which also it's recommended by a lot of nutritionists not to eat high fat but as long as it's not saturated fat, I think it's immensely good for you. Yeah. I mean, even some saturated brain, fats are really good for you. Your brain is made of fat. So why would you not feed it fat? Right. And even even some saturated fats are really good for you. Yeah. It depends. It's it depends on the like, sources. You know, level it out. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's interesting. I, I, I didn't I didn't think you would be so into nutrition. But is it? Be, do you think it's because like for yourself, your own body, or is it for your kid? Like what got you most interested in it? Well, I've always been very healthy because my mom is a health freak. Like she, she is the one actually who never let me eat processed carbs growing up and taught me about processed foods. Yeah. So I thought that I was extremely healthy just because I mostly lived off fruits and vegetables most of my life. Um, however, now after having the health problems that I had and then seeing what actually works, I realized that there's so like there's so much more to it than just eating more vegetables actually i don't eat many plants anymore because a lot of people don't know this but when you consume vegetables they have a defense mechanism in them that releases toxins into your body so yes you shouldn't avoid plants completely but you're actually putting toxins into your body by eating them so i don't not even um like stuff that's sprayed on them like chemicals you're talking the plant itself yeah the plant itself attacks your your body because it doesn't want to be consumed yeah yeah it attacks your immune system that's what normally like that people get the bloating from certain things Mm -hmm. um you know i find i find really interesting i mean when you're talking about general like medicine and doctors and prescribing certain stuff and it kind of just the information is awful (laughs) I actually have a buddy of mine who was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Yeah. Did he which, go carnivore? No. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know exactly his diet, but he was basically told by this doctor that like, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. And this is like, he's like shitting blood because like, ulcers and all this crazy mm-hmm. stuff. Right. And he's like, the doctor said, you know, you're going to have this rest of your life. You need to get on prednisone, which is like one of the worst the type steroid. of corticosteroids, yeah. which is a, it's a negative steroid for your body, which is detrimental to so many other things in your body. It's not like a performance enhancing steroid, yeah. right? So you're going to have to be on this for the rest of your life. Um, like you're going to have to be taking these medicines, all this shit. My, my buddy is so fucking smart. Such a smart guy. The guy who taught me so much about nutrition, about uh, hormones, everything. And he was like, okay, no. This guy cured himself. With, with food. With food, with 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 his habits, nicotine was a big thing. Like, a, I'm not saying go smoke nicotine, but small mm-hmm. amounts of nicotine, and like with his diet, changing his diet a certain way. Absolutely, it's a diet. And he got went back to the same doctor, and the doctor was like, "What the fuck did you do? You you have zero signs of this in your body, and wow. it looks like you'll never have this again." When so this is the crazy part, is that there are doctors all around the world telling people like, this is what you have and this is going to be here for the rest of your life. Yeah. And they just, because someone like my buddy Brandon knows enough to be like, no, I think I can fix this based on the science. Cause he's a nerd. Like he's so 
and I don't mean nerd in a bad way. I just mean nerd in like like he nerds out on the he's de- and he's determined to yeah. figure it out. One of the smartest people I know in life, and one of my best friends, he uh, he he fixed himself. He goes back to the doctor, and the doctor's like, "This is completely gone. You have no traces of this ever coming back. What the fuck did you do?" Yeah, and it's it's just like I, I'm crazy. It's crazy to me because. I just wonder how many people in the world are just constantly diagnosed with shit that like they could change through their diet, through and their habits. Do you say most of the diseases are caused by what you're eating? Always. Um, I do have one question though. What is the benefit of nicotine? Uh, so specifically with Crohn's disease, I, I think it would had to do something with like slowing down. Um, at, at the time it was like the bleeding, something yeah. like that. I don't know exactly how. Um, is it like a blood thickener then? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know what, it, I don't know how it related to the ulcers, uh-huh. but he, he, he was like, he was noticing that like the nicotine was helping. Um, he had changed like supplements that he was taking. Um, and then his diet completely and it changed, but I don't, I, my, again, I can, I'll probably get him on the podcast. Actually, I yeah. will get him on the podcast. Shout out Brandon. I'm gonna get him yeah, on the podcast one of these super days. Super interesting for them. Yeah. He, and I actually want to talk, I mean, he and I have crazy stories about just life in general, but this thing I'd love to really talk about too. Cause like, he literally fixed himself of Crohn's disease, which is something that it's an autoimmune disease that people yeah. are diagnosed with and their whole it's life forever. is like that. Yeah. And they deal with it forever and they just take these drugs and it fucks their, like corticosteroids will fucking wreck your life. It's like, it, it can fuck up your sex drive. It can get, make you fatter. It can make yeah, you lose make muscle. You blow it up. Yeah. It's so like I, the, yeah. the craziest shit. And these doctors are like, take this for the rest of your life. Otherwise you're going to keep dealing with the bleeding of the, you know, that he was basically shitting blood. Yeah. So I'll have him on because I do want to I want to know exactly what he did. And I'm he, sure you have a lot of people interested in health as well that listen because yeah. you do the whole gym thing. I yeah, think yeah, I gym would, bro I'll shit. probably listen. I want to hear how he like healed. Himself. Yeah, I'm going to have him come in. Brandon, I'll have him come on I for sure. I love those types of podcasts. Yeah, I will. I'll get him on. I will. Um, anything else like because you're that that was really like I didn't know you'd be interested in that at all. Yeah. Um, anything else it's like odd about or not. It's not odd, but anything else that you think people wouldn't know about you that you're interested in? Cause that just made me think like, what else? I mean, I'm, I'm a very like, you're like fencing eccentric person. <laughs> so I'm sure there's a lot of things that I don't think are unique, but other people would. Okay. So there's nothing else that you're like, you're secretly, secretly like really into? into just like the sustainability, the minimalism. I love that health. Cause I think health is like definitely up there on my priorities. And I mean, if you don't have your health, you got nothing. Yeah. What else do you really have? You can't take care of your child. You can't work. You can't enjoy your life. Yeah. Damn. That's it. So we're going to, we're going to, before, before every podcast ends, because the baby's back now and I know he's going to want some attention before I, hello, before every podcast ends, we do some crunch right now. He's lifting his whole body. Oh yeah. We do. uh, Yeah. Yeah. We do audience questions. So at the end of every podcast, if you guys want to get your questions answered with myself and the guests uh shoot them at uh gmail ask raw talk at gmail.com send us your questions and go to uh get raw talk this is on instagram if you guys want to like dm your questions there as well do you have some of those questions ready yep okay wait was this live no not live oh. no everyone says that though no it's not live no, they just email it in oh. advance and you like looked around for cameras and went, shit or what he well, went live there, but i was like i didn't know that it was live no no it's not he i wouldn't do you like that no live, so he was able there was a lot of questions about mike but we're gonna avoid those ones oh because oh that's because i did that on the live yeah okay yeah but i'm gonna so this one is one that i pulled up earlier it says i'm currently 300 pounds i want to drop to 200 pounds what are your keys to self-motivation whoa and better health type shit. Okay. So this guy's 300 pounds. He wants to drop to 200 pounds. And he's asking, what are the keys to self-motivation? Yes. Well, I mean, this is the, no matter how much you weigh, no matter what your goal is, the, the key is figuring out why that's important to you. So beyond just losing the hundred pounds, um, beyond just building the muscle, whatever the goal is, why is it significant? Like for this guy asking, what is the reason why you want to lose the weight? Like, and you have to draw these lines really clearly. Like, is it to feel better about yourself? And in what sense? Like, are you trying to like, you know, maybe preserve your life? I don't know if you, are you worried about dying because of your weight? Um, are you worried about your ability to, I don't know, talk to women? I'm not saying this is, this is what is happening. I'm just saying you have to draw that line finer. So you go, 
oh, there's no way that I'm not going to let myself do this because it's very, very important for me to do this, right? If I just said, hey, I want to gain 10 pounds and it just is like a, that's my surface level thought every time I think about it, then your drive can wander. Like your, your motivation to get there can, can falter, right? So it's about drawing the line much finer to like why in your heart is that goal important to you? And then you never skip a beat. You'll never miss a beat. What about you? What do you think? For me, it's, I love binge eating, which is like, oh my God, huge, me too. Like it'll Fuck. be extremely like healthy stuff. Like I can eat like three pounds of dates. Like that's my favorite. Oh thing my God. Me and Steve crush <laughs> dates and cashews. I love, oh my God. Yeah. You stuff them inside. So good. It's so good. That's like my thing that I have to look stuff because that's why I can't lose the weight because I love dates. Um, But for me, it's just, instead of focusing on the weight, because that even though I really do want to look like what I feel like I should look like again and like what I think is myself because I looked like that before and I'm 20 pounds heavier than I was before, um, just thinking about that isn't enough for me. It's more so focusing on how does the cardio that I'm doing make me feel. Once again, how does my brain function? How do How is my energy level when I do this or I eat this? Just focusing on the small benefits along the way and almost like looking at the reward yeah like, like what you're the, getting for the yourself reward centers that are being released in your brain naturally just from you doing those things will help keep you on track i think more than having a goal of wanting to lose 100 pounds like i think that's great to want to be course. healthier and want to look better and weigh 100 pounds less if it's an unhealthy weight for you but there are rewards along the way that i think you should focus on just anything becoming healthier makes you feel so much better. Yeah, just and it makes the rest of your life day. better. Yeah, it makes everything better. It makes your mindset better. It gives you more energy yeah. to do the things that you want. There's just so many benefits besides just losing weight to obtaining that lifestyle that does induce weight loss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She nailed that. Shoot us the next one. Okay, right, so this person asks, what's something people often misunderstand about you? Or oh my God, me? I mean, for both of you guys, man, um, fuck, it's, it feels like a loaded question. Um, well, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I don't know. I mean, maybe that, I don't know. I'm trying to think what people mi misinterpret. I don't know. What did you, what did you think about me before you met me? Cause like maybe from an outsider standpoint, right? That'd be the, that'd I've be. Always, I've always thought you were really nice. And that yeah. was like my first initial, um, like observation of you and now you're like this guy's a shithead right no <laughs> no you. you've always you've maintained that okay cool yeah all right i don't know i don't know what what i mean i there's definitely misunderstandings because i i think i don't know if people see me on the internet like big guy whatever strong guy shit content that i made in the past like lifting girls fucking off they're like mm -hmm. maybe i'm like a a douchebag or like a fucking like uh what's it what misogynistic is the word yeah which you're uh, not at all you're yeah. actually very respectful to women, I think. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I think that comes across sometimes maybe just because you see it on the internet. And like I'll make jokes or whatever the fuck just for content. But um, yeah, that's definitely not definitely not my character. But what about you? What have you been misunderstood? I think, you know, I think it's kind of the same thing, um, especially in this space. Just people thinking that it that it's okay to bully or say certain things or being mean to people online because they think oh they have money or they don't struggle like i do it just the perception that i'm not a human like they are yeah and that you know like treat me like how you would treat your friend or yeah. like i'm just a person like your friend your brother your mother um which i think people need to keep that in mind for anyone that they see online like they're people too yeah. you know just dehumanizing me or dehumanizing you yeah that i think it's i think that's one of the most common things when it comes to like celebrity or people on yeah. the internet that you don't know in person to just you know hear something or see something said about them and then you just make this this assumption that this person mm -hmm. is who who that is but it's like it's not that simple think how many times in your life person listening right now that in out of the 10 people you know that one person talks bad about you to, to two of the other people. And then you're like, wait a minute, that's not who I am. And, and you know that that's not who you are. 
And then you find yourself even in that small microcosm being like, what the fuck's going on? And then people judging you based on some random shit. So now imagine that on a scale with millions, you have what, 20, 19, 18 million followers. Like yeah, all these people. It can be an insane amount of negativity. Yeah. And people think that it's okay to bully people online because they're like, their life is perfect. They don't have the same struggles as me. Everyone has struggles just the same as you. And I think you should always know that and treat everyone with kindness, whether they're a good or bad person. Yeah, that's it. That's fucking, can't say that better myself. You got one more for us? Sure. So this person asked, can you tell a story of the first time you pulled the trigger on a on your first large investment starting your businesses or just throughout your career? Okay. I could tell the story about um, starting Zoo Culture. So um, for Zoo Culture, I, I at the point, at this point in my life, I had been very successful on the internet and I made a bunch of money doing like internet shit to say the least. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to open up this space. Originally it was for me just to shoot content. But regardless of that, my mind was like, fuck, this is the first time that I will ever have used my money. A lot of it, uh, I think a gym cost me like $500,000 just in the equipment. Oh out, yeah, just the equipment outside of signing the lease, which is like a seven year lease, which was like, I don't know, a $4 million. Like That's bold. Yeah. $500,000 equipment and then four or $5 million, like I'm going to pay over this term and then being like locked in, you have to do this. Yeah. Um, and I was extremely stressed, extremely worried. Like this is the first thing in my life that I took outside of the internet and I'm doing in person brick and mortar store. Didn't know how to deal with like employees or any of that stuff that could come along with it. And I remember I'm really grateful because I was able to call a friend of mine who's like a very, very successful a billionaire dude, very successful person in the industry, um, in the entertainment industry. And I called him. And I'd known him for years because I trained him before, like I kind of got into social media and the, the best advice he ever gave me in regards to this circumstance and my fear of doing this was he said, look at your life and look at where you came from and what you had. Like when I first met you and where you are now, why would you not try? Why would you not believe in your ability now? Mm -hmm. And that was one of the most significant things that someone had ever said to me, I think was instead of like being afraid of that moment, like and rising to that moment was but look at the rest of your life and all the things that you've come through, all the things that you've learned. And like, why would you not try to do something that like you're also really passionate about? Yeah. And, and that was a big turning point in my life. And recently, again, I just signed another lease for even more money, like three, four times as much the amount of money per month Jeez. for another space for the, for the moving of the gym to a newer location. Yeah. And I just realized like, fuck it. Like you just have to take those chances. You have to take those risks. Otherwise, what the fuck are you doing with your life? If you really want something, if you have like big goals and big dreams and you don't take those chances, then you're not going to get anywhere you want to actually go like period. Yeah. So, and it's like, what's the point? Like, yeah, let's say if I did it and I failed, at least I fucking tried, you know? Yeah. And I would, I would have so much more like resentment in my life if I didn't try. I know that. Yeah. Also, this is how I think about it. Um, one of my best business advice that I got was also from a very, successful entrepreneur who has like a billion dollar company as well yeah um and it was actually when i was like a hooker okay and he, and he <laughs> yeah. hired me he hired me um but like we dope. would talk and like he really wanted to help me with my life and like the next steps for me and he gave me really good business advice that i still follow to this day and i tell everyone if you want to start a business don't think about if you're going to fail because even if you invest money and you lose it, money can always be replaced. But if your business fails, you still gain so much knowledge Absolutely. from learning how to build a business, how to source products, how to make sales, just everything that you learn from hands on going in and starting a business. You learn more than people are spending maybe more money to go to business school to learn. Yeah. So I always say just just do it, especially if you don't have kids yet and you don't absolutely need that money to put feed food in people's mouths. Yeah. Go crazy, like take chances and like you gain knowledge from it regardless. So it's it's worth it. Yeah. Even if the business fails, you know better for next time. Yeah. I mean, that's just and, and that's that's a part of life is it? not everything's going to be guaranteed. But now I got a question for you now. Wait, you were a hooker. I mean, it was very, very short when I was like, I don't want to do porn anymore. Okay. And like people would want to hire um, like I, porn stars for like it. privates. It was like, I think I only did it for a month, but 
this advice that this guy gave me, it stuck with me. And it's definitely when I was like taking chances, like, should I really invest, yeah. you know, like half my money into this business that I really want to do? I always just did it. And sometimes some of the things that I wanted to do failed, but I really learned how to start a business and yeah. and grow a business. And so in the future, I'm going to use that. And I feel that I learned more people more than people who went to business school for hundred percent probably spent the same amount of money. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Like you learn through experience. I tell mm-hmm. my guys all the time, like the videographers and editors is like, why would you go to film school? It's like anyone who's going to hire you or if you wanted to do something on your own, no one's going to be like, Hey, what school did you grad? They would be like, show me your work. Yeah. You know, it's like, show me what you've done, what you're trying to do. No one's going to be like, show me your credentials, like of your school. Your school They're just going to yeah. show me what you know. And, yeah. and that's 10, 10, thousand times more valuable than just being like, oh, I went to the school. Like people of don't course. even care about that shit anymore when it comes yeah. to like hiring people. Also, what can you really learn from a book versus trial and error? Crazy. Doing it yourself. It'll be ingrained in your mind it, after oh, man. actually performing it versus just reading it and taking a test on it. Yeah. And it's even crazier if you think about the concept of like, it, it, this is just a small example, but they now have social media courses in college. And it's like, who's, who's, who's running that course? Like, is it me? No, because like I was in Joe it. Joe Schmo, who actually knows nothing. So it's just crazy. The it's fact a that waste they the money that a exactly. lot of education is a scam. As yeah. Well. Oh, that's exactly right. So it's just the whole thing's been that way. It's just like it became more relevant, like prominent when I was like, well, that's really a scam. When I I remember hearing about a business degree and it being a social media like profession, I, I was like, the, what? I heard that on the radio actually recently as yeah. well, and I was like. A social media degree? Yeah. What? Yeah, like am I, I'm not the professor there. Who the fuck is teaching that class? Because I was in it from the beginning. So, anyways, long story short, I'm also curious how much money did you make that mo- that month of doing that? Was it a good amount? No, it's like nothing. Like sex nothing. work doesn't pay you anything. It was yeah. just until I figured out what I was doing next because I knew I it. didn't want. Well, it sounds to. like you got some great fucking advice. Yeah, no, that <laughs> worth that more was than worth anything. More than money. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. All right, we got the next one. Hit us with the next one. All right. So this one says, I've been watching your channel ever since you started YouTube. I'm a 25 year old above average height and consider myself fairly good looking. I'm in a good (laughs) career with progression and earn um, a comfortable wage. My question is that I have. What if he just stopped it there and he was just like, (laughs) stop it there. Dating. He's just like, check me out. That's how I felt. Okay, go. So he was like, "Uh, my question is that I've never had a girlfriend or ever had much experience with women. Wait, how old is he? 25. Oh, and fuck. I can't seem to break out of this subconscious habit of avoiding the intimacy of being in a relationship. I don't know what is stopping me, but I generally don't know how I would go about meeting women and overthinking every aspect of wow. it due to the lack of experience. I'm naturally an introverted guy too, and I keep to myself most of the time. Do you have any advice? Wow. Okay. So um, I'm glad we have a girl on the, the podcast yeah. to talk about this, to, to help answer this. Cause it sounds like there's some, some you the biggest glaring thing is that I, I have a hard time like creating this, like being able to be in this intimate relationship type thing. So it's hard for him to get close, I guess, to women. Maybe you have to explore something that's gone on in your childhood. That's like stopping you or blocking you from allowing you to experience this or to feel this or to be allowing yourself to feel this. Um, but that's all I could think of. Cause you know, he said he was like above average height, which is dope. He thinks he's good looking, which is dope. That means you have confidence. Like, there's like, what would be stopping you in my mind? I don't know. It's it, To me, it sounds like anxiety and not feeling like he's good enough because he said he has a hard time like approaching women, right? To yeah. date. Um, honestly, what you have to do is you just have to do it. And even if you get rejected, which is really hard or you don't get your, you feel embarrassed by the outcome, you yeah. just have to keep doing it. The best way to overcome things is, is just do it, put yourself out there and, and live life and, once you get a few good experiences or positive reactions from women, it will become a lot easier. I'll give you boys an example. Do you know how many times I slid into her DMS on Twitter or Instagram to try and get (laughs) on a podcast, but she's here now. Yeah, I'm here. She's here. You see, Well, it was probably just cause I was like self isolating while pregnant. I'm just fucking with you. I'm sure a lot of people thought that I just like didn't fuck with them anymore. Like, I'm but, fuck. I'm just, it was just a, it was fucking with you completely. Yeah. It was just a oh. joke. Cause like, no, that's what I'm in. So your point is just fucking do it and try. Yeah. Otherwise you, just, you don't you know. You just got to keep trying. And so like self-esteem is built on your experiences. So if he feels like he's been rejected when he's tried, it's definitely uh, a lot harder, 
but once he gets a couple good experiences and like positive reactions to him trying to talk to girls it will become a lot easier he's got to get some notches on the belt yeah yeah, yeah. once you yeah once you that's what we say about jacob about you know he had a really hard time getting pussy for a while <laughs> No, for real. And now he's like a demon. Yeah, once he feels, once you once feel like you one can, time, once you, only one time. <laughs> yeah, he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And once yes. you feel like you can do it, other people are going to respond to you like mm-hmm. you can do it. Most of like people, the way that people perceive you is mostly based on how you, you perceive yourself. I feel. Damn, that's fucking facts. It's wow, true. I really thought about that right now. It's true. Like if I think I really believe if I think that I'm ugly and that no one will like me because of it, other people are going to see me that way and not like me. But it's not really because I'm unattractive. Damn, you, you really you put that in perspective, though. And I, I know it's not just a mushroom talk, but I was thinking about points in my life where I like felt a certain way about myself. And then like mm-hmm. that's the kind of energy I'm getting back from other yeah. people. No, it, it really like if you think super highly and positively of yourself and you put that out there people whether you're i said this a million times you can be very unattractive but if you think that you're hot and that you're deserving of dating a supermodel and you approach them that way you're so much more likely to get yeah. the response that you want do you so it's almost twofold though it's not just confidence it's like just a literal like belief and you really have to believe it and sometimes yeah. it's hard if you've had those negative experiences of being rejected reinforced it and then just keep building up on it yeah because i've like i've been down bad sometimes in my life too and then it's like i can have a few good experiences and then it completely changes how i feel about myself and then it's just like abundance after that yeah yeah hell yeah that was you crushed that (laughs) damn do we have any more is that it i think that's it i mean if you want that it i could pull more if you want what do you think one more (laughs) Oh no, we'll let it go. The baby yeah, the baby he, needs he, attention. He's, he's like, no more. No more. Okay, that's how we're gonna end it. Um subscribe to the channel. Uh if you're on if you're on uh, YouTube, drop a comment, drop a like. I appreciate all the love. Uh if you're if you're not on YouTube, you're on iTunes. Thank you so much. Drop a little review on iTunes. Uh maybe we'll be on Spotify soon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for you're amazing. Me. You're young, you're very successful, you're beautiful, you have an amazing young boy, and uh, I wish you, you like so much, compliment? so much success. You too, thank you so much. Absolutely, cool. Oh wow, she crushed that. <laughs> How many podcasts have you done? Oh wow, she crushed that. <laughs> How many podcasts have you done? For other people, I think I've done like five. And then for myself, like we used to do one every week, so. So how many total do you think? I have no idea. Yeah. I think we're on season two when I quit, so we had quite a few. Yeah, you're good at podcasting. Really? Yeah, you're really good. It's, honestly, I really worked on it because when we first started, I listened to myself talk and I was like, you sound like a dumbass, like your points aren't being conveyed properly because the way that you speak. So it's something that I purposefully worked on. Did you know that? Yeah, you crushed that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you did really good, for real. That was amazing. Thanks. Shit, I'm impressed. Yes, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Did you not listen to any of her podcasts? No, I listened to a few of them, but like, it's like, she crushed that. I've gotten better. Like, if you listen, I think the first one I did with other people was Impulsive with Logan and Mike. Yeah. And it was absolutely horrible. Like, it's a day and night difference. Yeah. Oh, so that just shows that you can improve anything about yourself. For sure. You were a lot more like, quiet yeah you, that way. you were very yeah. quiet and now it's like and very open and like I just well as about it I felt shy to like share my thoughts and like actually speak I like this baby it was so funny Brad was holding the baby for like a half of the yeah. quarter of the podcast really? he was just holding the baby like this dude I want, want a baby I want a baby <laughs> like this, I want to like, have a kid nice. so bad no Brad's gonna get like five girls pregnant oh my god I have a lot of kids on the way now you get a baby you get a baby you get a baby that was amazing he's like mama look yeah Let's get a photo, obviously. He's going to make sure he gets a boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's it, boys. That was amazing. That was one of the best pods I think I've ever done. Really? Yeah, that was awesome. Really, really good. Yeah, subscribe. We're out of here. I love you guys. Raw talk.